Oh, welcome to the Hard Yarns Podcast. Welcome to RAC Arena. <laughs> We're joined with our producer Cam McLaren today on the microphone and our guest and esteemed leader. The Edward n- Snowden Flake. The cum, <laughs> <laughs> the cum chaplain himself, yeah. Corey White. Um, outstanding. Like uh, We have touched on every single... We've solved all the world's issues. We've, we've, t- we've touched on everything. Do you remember what we touched on? But uh, little we boys. We've touched on uh, Dave Chappelle. We've touched on Fringe. We've touched on woke culture. Mm. we touched on the Kennedy assassination. <laughs> oh, yes. <laughs> we've touched on everything except kids. So, yeah. uh, <laughs> we touched on the Pfizer stuff. Uh, yeah. touched on Ukraine war, uh, Putin. This is your fake news, like... Oh, dissemination Just fucking Yeah it was uh, Yeah it was very good Yeah It's a good episode Well rounded And um, yeah We'll Lots give a good laugh We're gonna do a shout out To Raunchy Lager It's oh, yes. actually good It is actually good so. And um, it's the only beer I've drank over the last Month and a half And I've only had A couple of them mm-hmm. But it's I actually I don't just have it Because they're our sponsor now Yeah I seek it out If it's in a venue I drink it Because it's actually good like they say yeah. so i'm not even that's not even a plug for them that is it's if you haven't had it we you do drink beer and yeah. i'm not promoting everyone drinks beer but if you fucking see it have yeah. a sip because the raunchy lager is fucking good we believe in our sponsors um yeah, so we actually do it's fucking good also i want to thank pfizer for this episode <laughs> We would never <laughs> would never cop out for the money. I would like to thank 3B Chafe Cream for helping me get through the fringe gardens <laughs> with as minimal pain as possible with my sweaty balls. <laughs> <laughs> oh, fuck, that was funny watching you just splash water on your face Lee, on Saturday night. Like, but, um, it yeah, was hot. Thanks to Raunchy as well. We're going to give away a block of Raunchy to our Patreons. So if you're <laughs> a, is that just any patron or top level? I think top level for, to start yep, with, just top to level, reward them. Try to give out fortnightly blocks. So we're going to do that launch as well on the Patreon episode mm. with Corey White after this. And until then, it was a fucking awesome episode, so let's, well, let's get, get hard. hard without watching porn. Yes. <laughs> Welcome to Hard Yarns Podcast. I am fucking fat. <laughs> <laughs> Anything Chris White says, please <laughs> disregard it. 5D is actually a state of being. It's a unity consciousness. That was Hard Yarns with me, Frankie Rose. So I'm going to throw it over to your co-host. Daniel Adelby. And Cameron Brand. I would do this and then I'd gong. <laughs> <laughs> Free in attendance for the millions listening at home. <laughs> Let's get hard. Are we we recording? Yeah. 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 Was that hell loud? Yeah, it was really loud. Oh my Maybe my God. But that's that's because I turned up the uh <laughs> oh, I turned up the Who blue- needs a jab when you got that? I turned up the Bluetooth in there so that when we have people call in, it's louder for them because otherwise it's quieter. Yeah. Because we've had complaints for quietness lately, so you won't have complaints about that being quiet. Oh, that fuck. Honestly, yeah, Valen- that hell jump started my, God, my heart. <laughs> Good or bad? bad. Ju- speaking of jump starting your heart, no, we won't start on that. <laughs> <laughs> we won't st- I want to start on uh, something we can all have a chat about. Um Dave Chappelle and his recent trip to... Did any of you guys go? No. No, I missed out on tickets. I should have asked someone. I had my tickets. own show. <laughs> 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 yeah, I got, I've had very few bookings for showcase spots during this fringe, but Thursday night there was a lot of fucking vacancies I was being asked to fill. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I've got better things to do. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, the... Um, the uh, you I heard it. you started a fight. Wait, I was in that tier. They were fucking <laughs> over there to the right. I thought it was one of the, the deranged gender ideologues trying to make a protest. Yeah. yeah. But in the beautiful Perth spirit, mm. it was just some fucking bogans punching on. What about, but Maybe they I, were I defending... Know, maybe they I, were non-binary bogans. I heard a woman None. scream and I was like, oh, that sounds like it's yeah, come from yeah. the record bite. And, uh, <laughs> you know, maybe she's backstage with Colin or something. And, uh, <laughs> oh, we're fucking 30 seconds in. <laughs> We are 30 seconds well, in. Well, fucking, you know... I've got, I got no qualms with Cole, so I just want to put that out there. But yeah. ca- carry yeah. on with your Cole. <laughs> but no, I heard that fight break out and it took a little while. And, you know, Dave handled it very well. Um, he just started doing crowd work while it got uh, taken mm. care of and then just went straight back to... What can set? possibly start a fight at with comedy. Bogans yeah. at oh, comedy? I, Unless I, it was somebody that's like done it to maliciously... Have negative press. That's why I Chappelle. thought it was going on, I, but I would have assumed it's just some dumb cunt talking, and some guys told the other guy to shut the fuck up, and he gone fuck off, cunt, and he's just blown up. 
That, that, that would be off the top of my head. Yeah. Oh, look, it was and it was very warm in there, and warm weather does make people a little bit. <laughs> uh, it was fucking hiking. hot that day, hey? Mate, fuck whole last fun? week. It was yeah. hot. I live in a house with no aircon, so I've yeah. you know got it Spartan at the moment. Yeah. Mm. So, what part of the set was it in? Was it in a uh, an inflammatory I part of the set? He just dropped the word triggered. Yeah. Um, and then I reckon like, is triggered a euphemism. Yeah, well, yeah. you know, triggered, you know, when people are upset about something oh, that you said. I thought it was a, no, 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 I thought it was a rhyming triggered. word, but yeah. But then it kicked off. Um, but, yeah, look, it took seven or so security guards to restrain that person. And, I mean, it looked like they had the muzzle going because after that first sort of kerfuffle, it went pretty quiet. You could see, that, you know, there was a lot of security there. Yeah. But um, it didn't derail the show in any way. Dave handled it like the consummate professional yeah. that he is. Yeah, I think that's okay. what you need, man. Just start a fight to get some more notoriety. Well, look, in, your, in your crowd, I, I've got enough authenticity, mate. I, uh, <laughs> I don't need to be manufacturing fucking fake outrage at yeah. shows to be. Uh, I wouldn't tickets. mind just to sell some tickets to guys, man. I'm like, well, that's what made Jim Jeffries' career. He had that video of the bloke rushing him and punching him on stage, yeah. and then maxed out his credit cards. Like, fuck it, I'm going to the states, yeah. and the rest so is lucky. history, you know. Yeah, We're right. Lucky, right? Um, so, what you shared the article? I seen Amos shared the article. And it was a ghost writer. The cowards that they are. Because they don't mind putting their name to it when they're fucking rinsing a local comedian. Mm. Or they're putting their name to an article about bikies. Because the inference is, by not putting your name to the review, that, oh, some deranged Dave Chappelle fan is going to make me feel unsafe. <laughs> you know? And, like, have the balls to put your name to yeah. it. Um, I feel like if you're putting your name to a bikie... Um, Article. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah we didn't the you could put your name to a Dave Chappelle. But it was so funny because the review was just like, oh, you know, there was lots of laughs. Everyone enjoyed it. He's a consummate professional, but, you know, there was jokes about women and minorities and it's the disabled people and... Was this was this the se- front uh, second page of West Australia? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah right. but, like, but do they want in- inclusivity? Does everyone well, want to be told great jokes about? Uh, the humour about it is all the diversity, tolerance, inclusivity crew... They see a comedian be inclusive and diverse because everyone got roasted. Do yeah. you know what I mean? Yeah. It wasn't just like he picked on one group. Mm. And John Pinder makes this point. He's like, if you were backstage and all the comedians were hanging shit on your material, yeah. except yours, yeah. you wouldn't feel included. Yeah. yeah. And, you know, they've abandoned diversity in pursuit of it and they don't understand the irony. Yeah. But there was a lot of valid criticisms to make about Dave Chappelle, which were not made. Because mm. they can't make them because it exposes them for the fucking frauds that they are. Mm. Um, because, it, you know, it was very well written and he's a consummate professional. Um, but all he talked about was himself. Yeah. And mm. I think people in this cultural moment, to use my friend's phrase, uh, are looking for some commentary on, on the world and, and some sort of philosophical perspective. And yeah. he didn't have it. And what he said in closing, I thought, was really telling. Um, he's like, I don't really know what's going on in the world, but it smells like there's war in the air. Yeah. But we'll be all right if we stick together and mm. drop the mic and walked off. But you know what? I've been to see Tim Dillon, Jim Jeffries, Ostentatious, <laughs> Dave Chappelle, <laughs> and fucking not one of them, not one of them Go has on. a joke about the vax. <laughs> like, I, mean, I don't mean to harp on, but this yeah. was the most divisive, tectonic event yeah. that any of us have lived through. Yeah. And for socio-political comedians to have nothing to say about it, I mean... It's not so much what people say, it's what they don't say that is the most revealing, I think. Mm. And, you know, like I, you know, Dave Chappelle stood up for our art and I, uh, I'm not a rusted-on fanboy, but I have yeah. an enormous respect for what he does and what he did. But potentially he's got no idea about it. Like, well, he lives in the upper echelons of society where it maybe wasn't Maybe that's wasn't true. Or maybe the deep state said, hey, Dave, you can have this little career, but uh, these are the parameters which you're working. I mean, who knows? Yeah. No but one knows. Yeah, I wouldn't think that. I wouldn't think you could get to Chappelle. After everything that he took a stand for. They fucking got to JFK. <laughs> <laughs> Remember that? His wife took a catch of a piece of his head at second slip and was just like, hey, so they classic re- catches from Dallas. <laughs> they, they just released a... F- uh, fuck. <laughs> they, just, um, they just released, I think it was late like last year, a bit more stuff about JFK assassination. It's got and it's just ba- it's it's got done him. like it was the CIA. Yeah, and the rest of the world went, oh, that's cool. Yeah, well, we, like <laughs> like we didn't know that already. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, but they redacted everything. It was just a, such a heavily redacted version of. Terrible oh, redacted. Who's been into redacting in recent times? <laughs> so, so what's yeah. the what's the meme? Fiverr, Black Lines Matter. Oh, yeah. that's fucking good. Yeah, that's great. 
Yeah, the Pfizer stuff. That's um, it's what they what they tried to get it released over 70, 70 years. Seventy five years. Seventy five. This is years. what I, you know, like every. No know, wonder. I don't know how you've gone about this, Branchy, but when like I don't like to bring the topic up in conversation with people who you know mm. have the jab because I don't want to make anyone feel bad about it. But when it is brought up and they're still defensive about it, I'm just like. How can you still maintain... You've got Stockholm Syndrome. Yeah. I and they are doing all sorts of gymnastics in their head to rationalise to themselves. Why? Why? Yes. And yeah. justify it. But it's just... It's pathetic. Did you see, I feel sorry for them. Did you see recently the 17% uh, increase in heart attacks in 2022? No, they're, they're coincidences, Branch. Oh, coincidences. <laughs> sorry. And um, and so they're, play, they're, they're playing that out as the 17% increase was... Uh, due to uh, you know lack of um, what was it? so due to COVID due to lack of uh, uh, knowledge about what was in the jab no being um, uh, what do you call it fucking uh, active no fuck. uh, diagnosed with whatever conditions they had pr- that were right. going to contribute to it um, yeah why are they fucking dancing around they're the literally fact? just dancing around it's so dumb it's like we've gone. Oh look, man, we've uh, we've released the semi-automatic on the first of March, <laughs> and a month later, there's been a fifty percent increase in bullet-related deaths <laughs> because correlation <laughs> is not causation. Delves, yeah. um, do your research, mate. Fuck. And yeah, and then they're saying myocarditis increase, and and that is due to COVID, not due to the long vaccine. COVID. Long COVID. Long like, COVID. And. Fuck, he- uh, fucking heaven help us if we get short COVID. We know what short man syndrome be like in a virus. Fuck. <laughs> so, the, so before I think my mum's got long COVID. The, I'm praying she does. The thing actually. is, and this is the perfect example of where a mainstream narrative can come and have an influence on what people are thinking. Before there's even been a study on why there's been an, a 17 percent increase, they've just assumed Sense, yeah. they've made an assumption, an assertion from nothing. Yeah. From a couple of doctors who have said, yeah, well, it's not it's from nothing, it's from the money given to them by yeah. Pfizer yeah. to say. Yeah. Well, and that's it. That's that should not be overlooked, that the fact that the media companies that are the ones that majority of people are getting their information from, or the majority of the sheep, I guess, are getting their information from, are sponsored by Pfizer themselves. Well, this is what was so funny about the Project Veritas stuff, right? Because it's like Pfizer's got a billion dollar media operation it's you know it's clearly got tentacles hmm. within all the major media organizations across the world and what brought them undone fucking grinder yeah <laughs> <laughs> That's insane. <laughs> well, it's always it's always honey traps for gay guys on Project Veritas. Well, because they're fucking like. horny cunts, mate. <laughs> 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 Women think men are creeps. Wait till you meet the gay guys, mate. They're oh. the fucking creepiest of the lot. But yeah. it, I've seen it's always honey traps for the guys giving up the information are on gay dates. Like the, the last couple of projects. I don't think they all are, but they have been lot, yeah, two or lot. three of them. Yeah, and then, and then getting yeah the, the hot chicks to get it's the guys cool. to spill. The I'm on starting to feel sorry for them. <laughs> I yeah. feel a bit sorry for them. If you think I you're going for a bit, don't, of, bit I fucking don't. Nah, and you see the way when that um Jordan Tristan Roberts whatever when he's being stung fucking and the way he was talking about it with like oh, yeah. he was laughing about it. Yeah, yeah. yeah, this is what we've been doing. We're trying to hide it from that, and it just spoke to the mentality of these people. Yeah, yeah. that's what's and fucked. they've got no empathy. I mean, that's the person. Yeah. of evil and Hannah Arendt said it in her book um, the banality of evil mm. I mean that guy is a very fucking you know average dude and in he's every prob- way he's probably like super woke super oh, fucking did you see the when he confronted the way I feel unsafe right now yeah, I yeah. fucking hate the way that word well, has been used in this modern power what about game. everyone that was forced to have Pfizer's yep. jab that was unsafe yeah. Yeah. it doesn't matter well yeah yeah. Regardless and of the sexuality, <coughs> it's just fucking the way he was discussing it. It's fuck it. It makes your blood boil, man. So another yeah. w- another thing. Yeah, a hundred percent. Because I think that's how Nazis would have discussed the same thing. Like, oh yeah, yeah. Like, we yeah. just we got have these, these camps, and you know, yeah. <laughs> yeah. one star rating on Yelp, yeah. but you know, <laughs> but it's yeah. good. For, it's good for everyone. It's good. It's good for everyone. Yeah, yeah it's, it's not so good for term. the Jews, but you know, <laughs> in the future, yeah, 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 yeah. it's looking great for us. Oh, it's fucked. And if you haven't seen it, I don't, can you even see it now? I they think, take it down I think it's on Rumble. But to see the way that Google jumped on board and they were just scrubbing any mention of this dude from the internet, his LinkedIn profile. And how like, is that even... Like, after what he said, how can they say that this is not for the benefit of people to know? Well, and Forbes magazine came out and did a piece on it. And they're like, well, you know, 
if this was true, don't you think every major media organisation in the world <laughs> would be jumping on it? I was like, fucking no. <laughs> Not what it's like, owned by Pfizer. Remember <laughs> Edward Snowden, that guy who told everyone we're in a mass surveillance operation by the deep state and now he's in Russia? <laughs> yeah. He's in exile While in Julian Russia. Julian Assange is in prison in the UK. No, I don't fucking believe you jump on it, you lying dog. Crazy. Mm. Crazy. Yeah. And also Forbes Time Magazine Man of the Year is Pfizer the jab. So what can you do? They're giving fucking... <laughs> And the ads they've got, like you see Martha Stewart went out and did that ad. Yes. You know, pink. And Questlove. Que- oh, that? that broke my heart. Yeah. That fucking broke my heart. Yeah. yeah. I think, was that you that said that as well, Cam? About Questlove. Yeah. Yeah, it was, yeah. When you, yeah. And somebody, I think it might have been you and someone else. Someone else. When they saw Questlove, they were like, Everyone. Nah. Everyone, bitter, yeah. I, I, bitter, I, I, bitter belief, bitter, 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 bitter belief. That was it. Yeah, yeah. I, I had to do it because I, I couldn't afford not to. It's one yeah. of those ones where I'd coming from no money, you have to fucking. I had to take it. Otherwise, yeah. you, I couldn't. I, I wish I had the balls to do what you did and just be like, "Fuck it, I'm not well, going to be a lawyer anymore." I yeah. was in a position of privilege to be able to say no because I didn't have anyone depending on me to. Yeah. And we talked about this, you know, and um, I didn't have mortgage service, mouth to feed. The only person I had to look after was myself, and I'm fucking happy to eat baked beans. Well, the <laughs> <laughs> the, the pressures that came from my – like, I have a dependent. I have a, have a business I'd spent four years building. Mm. You know, I probably lost uh, a, a relationship due to the mm. effort I put into it. I, I, put, I was willing oh, – not willing. I was going to lose a lot if I didn't take it. And I had to stand I, – I stood strong by what I wanted to do. And by the time I was almost willing to cave, everything started to drop. Mm. But I, I don't think I would have lasted much longer. I, I've been thinking, I've been talking about this in my show, and you know, I don't know if I would have had the the courage and the fortitude to be able to withstand it had I not been through what I had with the Fringe Festival and seeing your own tribe turn on you and say things that weren't true and you know believe a lie before the truth had time to you know come and be heard. Yeah. Um, I don't know if I would have been able to withstand it because the pressure was so intense and people forget how hostile that climate was. Yeah, you know? they do, they definitely yeah. do. And um, mm. one thing, I, <coughs> one thing when they cite, oh well, it worked. That, that's what they say. It worked. It they've didn't not, work. They've not factored in natural immunity at all. They've not factored in. They've they've taken it as a broad mass. Um, their numbers mm. on broad mass instead of saying how many people who got jabbed that were vulnerable versus the ones who were unvulnerable. They haven't used that as a, a statistic to reference. These sorts of things should be factored in because they're very different. Because if you had everyone that was not vulnerable and that's all they tested to see who got jabbed and who didn't and who how many people went to jail, that would be a very different statistic. Went to Com- jail? Jail, to hospital, sorry. Oh. Um, so the people who went to hospital or had a severe yeah. reaction, so the people who were... Well, the figures were fucked. Yeah, it and was, and they were fudged as fudged. yeah, and they were fudged as well. Because anyone with a broken leg that was in hospital was there for COVID. Yes, like people who died, people who suicide. So one of my favourite quotes is: uh, "Statistics are like bikinis; they look good, but what they're concealing is the most revealing." <laughs> you know, so. Yeah, yeah, that yeah. So that uh, that's very it's it's become one of those things where um, we've had recently, and I told Dolby this: we had a TikTok video from months ago where we would call it. Calling out the Pfizer leaks, where the CEO admitted they n- never knew if it would stop the spread, but the messaging from all of the governments and all of the fucking major mm. leaders around the world is it was going to stop it, not yeah. not mildly prevent it, not well, anything like that. It was going to be like it stops with you. That an was the messaging campaign to memory hole all of this as well and to forget. Yeah. Um. But did you see what's happened in Thailand? No. What? Oh, so one of the you know, the royal family in Thailand. Yes. Yep. Uh, the king's daughter, the princess, she's gone into a coma after she's had her third shot. Mm. And Doctor Bhakti, uh, I think he's a German Thai doctor. Um, they've sought him out because he's been, you know, speaking out about this uh, since the get go. Uh, and apparently, he's advised the royal family, and this is, he said this as much of himself. Yep. And the Thai government is going to nullify the the contract with Pfizer. Wow. So All it takes is somebody that's in a position of well, power to this, be affected. This might become a contagion for them. And the mm. thing that they're most worried about spreading is fucking people <laughs> repudiating the contract. <laughs> and maybe we'll get to see what's in it. And set a precedent. Well, and this is the thing. Everyone wants to see what was in those contracts. Because remember when the ABC leaked the story about, oh, you know, health bureaucrats in Australia having to sign non-disclosure agreements before they've gone into negotiations with Pfizer. Really? Mm. That's unprecedented. That's fucking All scary. the fucking clauses in the contract were saying, we didn't know how much it cost. 
whether there were sovereign assets being put up for collateral, and they had the fucking audacity to call us conspiracy theorists. Because yeah. mm. the hallmark uh, of all impropriety is secrecy. So if it's yeah. fucking nothing wrong with it, show us. Yeah. Mm. But they couldn't. Yeah. Uh, it's illogical. It goes against democracy nearly. If we're fucking voting for these people to look after us, but they're not being transparent. Yeah, but all these all these things are made not by the people that we vote in anyway. Yeah. So yeah, the well people who... Bureaucrats. Anything that we're mandated to do should be fucking completely transparent yeah. as well. Oh, we got a choice about it. Let's vote on it because mandate is the language of democracy. Remember when we got to vote on gay marriage? Yeah. 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 I'm going to get a vote for this. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's... You, how vindicated do you feel now, Branchy, <laughs> with like being able to go the journey? In incredibly vindicated um it is frustrating from time to time and i was saying this before i had people still having goes at us on tiktok from a fucking month four or five months ago and that one's been vindicated completely vindicated mm. what we've said on that one and they'll still bite down but it's part you know we talk about moving on i've moved past it mm. in, not in regards to like move past um what i've moved past is trying to convince anyone no. or I never, I didn't, I never really pushed it on anyone. I never usually really pushed my views. I talked about it on here, but I never pushed my views on anyone. Um, but what I've really stopped trying to do is fight anyone who argues against what I've. I think the myself. message just needs to be: don't trust one source of media. Pretty plain and simple. Well, I mean, I don't have to fight to prove myself yeah. right anymore. No, it's been done. Yeah. Like it's been the done by the footing, <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah. yeah. So um, even the media are saying that the original stats were now. Mm. Like they're the ones that told us when CNN and then flipped around and said, "Oh, actually, all of the things are inflated," which is what we were saying. Yeah, fucking six to eight months in. But when CNN and M MSNBC and stuff, when they're reporting on it, then you know it's it's sort of like it's become mainstream. And if they're the ones delivering a negative message against it, I actually start to get a little bit worried. Like, why why are they why doing, are they doing that? it? Yeah. yeah. Well, it may, it makes it recall of this was all orchestrated, doesn't it? Uh, mm. Yes. And that or orchestrated where compared to whether or not it was just uh, corporations taking advantage of a shitty situation, those have always been a debate for conspiracy theorists. But <clears throat> And I've always been of the elk, like, this was a, a, a situation that wasn't manufactured on purpose but an accident and then people took advantage of it but it's starting to feel more and more orchestrated as a testing event for what sort of power and what sort of influence and mandates they can impose in the I future i would like to think but is it oh, yeah, well, yeah, no, yeah, yeah. But if that's the case right say it was a tester to see if like how society would react now that all this is coming out we're going to react way harsher now. that's what i was thinking so it's, it's really if, if that's the purpose of it, it it must just be a one big company trying to capitalize on a situation yeah because potentially I feel like if unless it's all of our dna is munted now yeah i feel like if it's going to happen again there's going to be well, I'm not Why doing it again. Push back. I'm, I won't I, I've got tickets to Japan in April, and I just yeah. found out I need to be triple vax. So now I'm like, fuck, what do I do? Yeah. Like, get so a do fake I do? passport. You reckon? Get a <laughs> I mean, what? Do, yeah. Well, I mean, it was nice that the I'll Ukrainians were making them. Like, yeah. it was nice that there was something <laughs> fake that wasn't from China for a change. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. My experience, I mean, I just found it, you know, I've had a few people who've come up to me and, you know, privately said, look, disagreed at the time but you know respect what you did and, and stood by it and um you know i've had a few of those but by and large i feel it's like th there's nothing sadder than the death of an illusion mm -hmm. and people don't want to see the illusion shattered and mm. you know they retreat to the comfort of a lie because the lie absolves you of any responsibility you don't have to do anything if you go okay yeah, yeah that was a fucking fraud mm -hmm. um so well, how do you feel i had my jabs because yeah well i agreed uh, B, rent, and C, people relying on me. Like, Mac Shane needed it for his mortgage to do my shows with him. So how do, do you how do Cam. you feel in hindsight? Um, Not physically. I feel lucky. Yeah. I feel lucky. That you didn't have a severe reaction? Yeah. Well, I did. Or I went to hospital and I had yeah, yeah, heart, yeah. like weird heart palpitations and I went after a fringe show. Um, they told you it was stress, hey? Well, that, yeah, they just said that there was nothing really too stressful but i've never had it since mm. so and that was like two weeks after i had it so mm. i don't know but um i don't know man because i look at the money that i made that's put me in a really good position quitting teaching <coughs> let's say so potentially it was like a let's say potentially this experimental when we should definitely call it experimental if i had my time again i would actually not do it and i would use fake passports or not even because once even when i got got it i didn't even get really checked 
going in as a performer. Yeah. Ever. So, yeah. Ever. Ever. I Nothing. wish. None of my I venues, I, didn't. I had to do it because the venues like, oh, send us your Yeah, you have to like, do it. No, I never ended up sending them through. All the places I do my weekly quizzes and stuff, they all ask for a copy of it. And because I'm so lazy with my admin, never sent one through. So it's like, I, I got it because I had to. And then no one ever asked Yeah, I, I wish I did that. I wish I did that. Mm. Excuse me, I've just got to go empty my bladder. That's yeah. okay. Yeah, so, uh, yeah, I don't know. It's, but, w- okay, let's put this <coughs> uh, terrible situation on, on you. But in hindsight, so you're happy that you made the money. But. Yeah, it put me at a good advantage. It helped out. Cam and yeah, it helped and out McShane as well. What do, what does it do? Let's let's say this experimental drug that we all were not all, but like we were forced to mm. basically forced to have. What if long term? And people say we it's not going to have long term problems, but we don't know that. Mm. What if in a couple of years you get an issue? Yeah, and I'm not I'm not trying to put that on you and scare yeah. you. Yeah, but well, like, what if what? Well, and, and not just you, like yeah. fucking millions of people around the world. I've noticed my penis is shrinking. <laughs> <laughs> no, nah, you're just getting fatter. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's the flab, not oh, the jab. <laughs> yeah. um, then I will fucking, I'll be suing the fuck out of the government. Well, no, but can't. that's the point. That's why it will never come why? out that it is a Because if it, they did oh, come yeah. out and admit it was all fake, then that's a massive yeah, yeah. class action against the government. Where's that money coming from? So yeah. um, if, if there's an issue, then I'm, I'm going to... Fuck, it. Well, what can you do? Well, I think Corey can comment on this better when he comes back. But uh, oh, from memory, there's no, um, <clears throat> there's no, uh, what are they? They absolved the. They the gave them an immunity, an, an yeah. immunity. liability. Now, I it's think that, all, I well. think that also well, the comes. The government, we can't sue the government. If can't sue if Pfizer. Can't sue Pfizer. But, no, but you sue the Australian government. Surely. For there's compensations here. But that blew out the federal government budget costings. Yeah. They budgeted for something like 20 million and it's blown out. Yeah, well, they shouldn't have fucking forced us to do it. Well, that, and that should have been the first red flag. If they don't want to be liable for their product, mm. yeah. then why should you force it on yeah. everyone? That's yeah. like, here, go bungee jumping, but if something happens. Yeah. Yeah. Like, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. At yeah. least you get a fucking, you know, <laughs> you, you get can a sue on the seatbelts <laughs> if they <laughs> How fucking badly of those analogies. Remember that? You're going to kill my nana. Yeah. You're going to kill my nana. Yeah. Fuck off. You don't go visit your nana anyway, you selfish <laughs> fuck. <laughs> yeah. And that was, that was the reason behind being selfish. Yeah. Like but also, like, the media... I remember talking to my grandparents, and the media got to them. They yeah. fucking were like... They made me feel... Yeah, my, I was like, I go, Granddad, like, you're going to be fine. Yeah. Like, it's going to be nothing. It's all been proven to not really work. It's not going to stop transmission, but they wouldn't have it. They were like, no, you have to wear your face. Is mask. that the Italian side? No, no, English side. It's funny you say that, because a mate of mine, his nonna's like 98 or something, living over in Valcada. Yeah. And I was talking to him at a Chrissy party. He goes, when McGowan was on TV, my nonna was saying in Italian, it reminds me of fucking Mussolini. Yeah, you know? right. <laughs> I was just yeah. like, that's wow, interesting. that's insane for someone yeah. to say who lives through the Second World. Yeah, my nonna used to believe everything on the TV. Like everything. If she watched the news, like she would think it's going to happen to me. Like I remember I was watching, um, we were on the news. I told her I was going snowboarding and there'd been someone like that died from snowboarding. Oh, Danny, me watch your news of somebody crash or die. <laughs> watch yourself, Danny. Everybody die. Everybody die. I'm like, no, like it's completely fine. So oh <laughs> she God. believed everything she saw. But she also, yeah, actually I won't tell that story on the pod, but... um. Yeah, save, uh, it, save it for the Patreon. Yeah, well, yeah. I will. I got. Um, uh, I've been getting that sort of stuff, you know, with the shark video. Yeah. Um, I got hit up by a few people saying it's irresponsible for me to start keep taking my daughter there. Fuck up, you dickhead! Now, I know, yeah. Where should you take her? The yes. river? Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, was, I was just about. I was just, I was just about to say. So soon hasn't helped my argument that someone just died in the river. Yeah. Um, but is is that the first one in like a se- in first a century? One in, no, first one in two years, but a century in the in century in the in, in, oh, first death yeah, in the century. Because last year that bloke off Blackwall Reach got bit. Remember. In the, in the river, huh? Yeah, 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 yeah. But Rivers are filled with sharks. Yeah. It's like, I get so fucking mad. Like, Ollie Peterson, I think it was. Fuck, I hate that sickle cell sycophant. Mate. He is just a doughboy for the establishment. Fuck, I hate it. Yeah, him. so I'm listening to him. And he's got the minister on the line. And he's like, yes or no? Have you done something about the sharks since they bit 
Peter, whatever his name is, last year. And the guy's like, well, it's a little bit more, you know, nuanced than that. He goes, yes or no? Have you done anything? It's like, oh, fuck off. What the fuck do you want to do, cunt? Do you want to go have a oh. meeting, get all the great white shark prime ministers in and go, listen, blokes, yeah. we're going to fucking, <laughs> let's do an amnesty. Like, yeah. what the fuck are you supposed to do? It's a fucking river system that joins to an ocean yeah. where fish go and sharks live. Yeah. If you're going onto the river, it's fucking enter at your own risk. Yeah, because yeah, I- enter at your own fucking risk. Yeah. I jumped off that black. What's that? What's Black Wall Reach. Black Wall Reach. I was jumping off there last year, and then the next. Oh fuck this mic! Jumping off there the next, and the next week, that guy, that guy got bit. Yeah, same spot. Well, sharks exactly. are following. They're trying to get you. Yeah, I didn't realize. They fucking missed yeah. you. They went for you at Pinaroo Point. I didn't realize. Like when you jump, it's black. Like it's, like it's about sap. ninety-five meters of water there. I think too. Black Wall Reach, and, and it's sap. Like it's like you can't see the water. Like mm. you can't see through it. Like you can the beach. Yeah. So I was like, anything could be here right now. <laughs> this yeah. is fucked. Um, and uh, yeah. So if you're jumping in there, like I'm not blaming that girl. Fuck yeah. it. But yeah. But um, uh, I did see the numbers. People were like, there's so many more sharks this year. There's so many more sharks. And then they showed the numbers. Oh well, there's actually less. There's a hundred less sightings mm. um, this year than there was last year. You're just seeing it on video more because yeah. everyone's got drones and helicopters. There's the exact. I think there's the exact same amount. But yeah, the fact that no there's difference. Yeah. like there's more like social media, you see more things. Yeah. Because there's drones now, we're gonna see stuff that we never saw before. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's an mm-hmm. eye opener. I find I mean th- I've been following this debate for years as a surfer. You know, it's like What's oh, your opinion? Do you wanna fuck sharks up or no? Well, not bull sharks, got no problem with the bull sharks, but they're the most <laughs> vicious though, I mean, right? My vi- my views have kind of evolved because there's only one shark I'm worried about and a white one mm. yeah enough but <coughs> um <laughs> when they happen the attacks seem to come in the certain the surfers they'll be in a pattern there'll be two in really close proximity mm. and you talk to the old abalone divers it's from south australia yeah and they reckon the behavior of the sharks has changed they become more aggressive mm. um, wow <coughs> excuse me and they ascribe it to the cage diving industry mm. off the neptune islands because you know, where in the natural world can you go and fuck with the shark's food and chum up and draw them into the boat for yeah. customers and not affect the behaviour of the animal? It yeah. happens in baboons. It happens in birds. Yeah, wow. yeah. These are old predators. And they put the blame squarely at the, uh, the cage diving <laughs> Just operations. Just careful what you say there. <laughs> 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 Avalonis, we need to finish that sentence. <laughs> oh, fuck. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah, yeah. That does. That's a very good point. But isn't there... I thought there's rules in place where they're not allowed to chum the water. Um, I don't know about South Australia, but the cage divers yeah. certainly do it. They, ch- they yeah. chum up and they draw, they bring in like draw tuna carcasses. In. And yeah. Yeah. Mm. But apparently a pot of orcas went through and destroyed some great whites. Yeah, seen that. They filmed that for the first time. Fucking oh, the whites I, have uh, gone. Did orca you, situation. Did you see that one where they, yeah, they fucking just, it up. just fucked it up? Yeah. Just bit it. And just like and you see the all blood, the sh- just and all the great whites took off from that area. All the tag sharks fucked off. Mm. Really? Yeah, because the orcas. Got- so we need to f- invest in orca security. Man, orcas are fucked. Have you seen them fuck with their prey? Yeah, mm. and they like look the seals and they'll kick them in the yeah, air and yeah, shit. Yeah. They're very smart. I've seen that one launch the seal like fucking hundred meters. I remember watching. Like it's fucking bad, but like it's funny as fuck, man. I remember watching that <laughs> when I was whips this bitch. when I was like uh, like year seven or something there was a david atmore documentary and it was just on orcas and how they just like they beach themselves to yeah. get the seals yeah, on the on so yeah that's wicked. submarine and then they yeah the, and then they'll kick them in the air and make them think they've got a fucking chance and then they'll just now nah, once they're when done once they're done bang. Mouth, one yeah. of the blokes on the whale shark boat uh, had his camera there and they filmed a pot of orcas trying to separate a humpback calf from its mother oh. and it was just a fucking bloodbath blood bath. and the BBC paid him like $500 a second for the footage that's amazing and he had half an hour of this stuff wow you know? so I was like he's done alright for a day yeah that's orca fans and so an orca all the way up there <laughs> <laughs> yeah well they're migratory and so, same with the great whites um, and that's why I think it's probably the same great white sharks that are responsible and every surf has got a fucking theory but yeah I think it's probably the same two or three sharks who, you know, go and get But to catch off. that specific shark. Oh, no hope. And how would you know that was the shark that's yeah. done it, you know? Yeah, well, probably have a wetsuit in him. On the subject right. of great white sharks, I saw uh, the Sydney Pride Parade. They've got a new float yeah. installation in Sydney and it's a, it's a giant great white shark draped in the rainbow and trans... 
pride flag. So what's wow. what's the meaning of this? Because I've seen that. Well, as a, as a white male comedian who surfs, that's my fucking biggest fear. <laughs> what, a gay shark? A progressive you? shark. <laughs> <laughs> A progressive it shark. makes me feel unsafe. <laughs> yeah, fucking oath. Well, I, I think, isn't there maybe a link bet- to the all-gay rugby team? I think they're called the Sharks. Potentially, there's a Sydney rugby, an all-gay men's rugby team. No idea. I think I read an article on that. Cam, do you, have, do you know anything about that? Uh, I know the Perth one's the Rams. The Rams? <laughs> That's, that's pretty funny. It's not even a joke. That's yeah. legit. <laughs> Fuck off. Do they have a lesbian one called the Clams? <laughs> <laughs> Fuck. Yeah. Let's have a look. I think... Oh, no. They're called the Sydney Convicts. So, go figure. Well, there's a lot of homosexuality <laughs> in prison. Say, prison figures, style. Yeah. Um, um, but, yeah, I don't know. I don't know what that is. But um, before I forget, that clip that you're saying about the orcas fucking the humpback squirrely tells a good story. I think it's on one of our earlier pods, how they were on the boat and there was, like, a dolphin. And I was like, oh, so sweet. And then these orcas just come and fuck it up in front of the tourist boat. Yeah. Oh, no, we need yeah. the minister to step in yeah. to the natural world. <laughs> What's he going to do? Nothing. Um, yeah, fuck. Yeah, squirrel has got some ripper stories, eh? Hey? Cam, is this all right the way I'm sitting no, like, sideways or yeah. I need to be forward? No, no, no. no. Have you not moved? He's not moved too far, that no, one? No, you're still, in, you're still in shot and you can see you better, actually. Yeah, cool. Cool, perfect. Um, yeah, uh, going back on <coughs> what we were just talking about with the the – I guess the orchestrated, the orchestrated stuff. So the orchestrated stuff I was talking about. Are we talking about orcas now? Or no, what? not orcas <laughs> orchestrated. So orchestration. Uh, I'm starting to see that in a, other, a few other area, areas that I think you'd be interested in chatting about. And it's in regards to digital uh, identity and digital currency um, and how it's being implemented by, again, not people who were voted in, but people that you know go to the World Economic Forum and have their opinions, and part you know people past prime ministers having a huge influence on what we're doing. Well, did you see the list of the people who got invitations to the World Economic Forum? No. Well, yeah. West Australia had uh, Julie Bishop, my mate Twiggy Forrest, yeah. and his CEO Elizabeth Gaines all went to World Economic Forum. Really? Right. Twiggy's been to fucking Kiev to meet with Zelensky and donate seven hundred and forty million dollars. Why does he? What is that? Because he's trying to be like a philanthropist, or does he have interests in this war? Because I don't know too much about it. Twiggy's I know you don't only like Twiggy. In it if there's something in it for Twiggy, right? Is like, he though? No, nah, he masquerades as a philanthropist, and this is the thing because he's got in, that much money. He doesn't need any more. In right? Russia, they're oligarchs. But yeah. in Australia, we call them philanthropists. Yeah. And the way he abuses the not-for-profit organisations at Mindaro and Tatarain, because they're not run like companies, they don't have the same disclosure requirements as a company or a trust does. So that's why they use them. Mm. And all that money, I mean, that's fucking the wealth of Western Australians for the next 10 generations that they've stolen. They don't even have a land use agreement with the Injibandi people on the most profitable mine in the world. And yet he's got $740 million he can go and take for neo-Nazis in Ukraine. Mm. It's fucking obscene. Wouldn't the flip reversal argument be <clears throat> if they weren't doing it, there would be no wealth generation? It's not like the local people are going to start a mine. I'm not opposed to mining carte yeah. blanche. What I am opposed to is skullduggery and corporate espionage to subvert and divide communities in order to get your money. Right? And they've got the money, okay? You did what you did, fair enough. Mm. At least fucking settle with them. But Twiggy won't even settle. Yeah. And for all their talk about how much they care about Aboriginal people, well, when it comes time to put your money where your mouth is, they fucking shut up. Mm. So we can mm. talk about that later because I've got someone I want to spray. <laughs> you got what? You gotta I've got someone I want to spray <laughs> later. Oh, fuck, okay. we'll do it now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is my problem with the arts community and the LGBT community. They know nothing about everything mm. and they will take money from fucking everyone. So there's this... They wouldn't know a power structure if it spiked their drink, fucked them in the ass, and offered them a Netflix special <laughs> in the morning as hush money, right? <laughs> and there's this one person who I acted for, right, when they got charged for all the climate change protests. And I did it pro bono, right? You know, didn't boast about it. That's not why I do charity. Anyway, this person didn't even say thank you, which, you know, really grinds my gears. Fucking people with bad manners shit me to tears. But it uh, goes by the name The Period Preacher. 
And most interesting thing about women writers is that they have periods, apparently. For seven years she's been doing this shit, written a book, a whole shebang, and it's fucking... If it's art, it's, it's finger painting. But... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> got 25 grand from Mindaroo. So Mindaroo are dishing out all this arts money, you know, and their catchphrase is, be bold, be ambitious. You know, so she's got 25 grand to go out to talk to your Aboriginal communities about periods. Yeah. yeah. These are communities that still suffer from trachoma that have got all sorts of problems that aren't period related, Mm. she won't fucking talk about. So I'm going to rebrand myself to get some arts money from the Mindaroo Foundation. (laughs) There we go. I'm not going as the period preacher. I'm going as the cum chaplain. (laughs) (laughs) The cheese jester. (laughs) It's just... uh, And what will the cum chaplain do? Give us a sermon. Well, or a seaman they would do. <laughs> Give us a church seaman. Look, if you want to know what the cum chaplain does, you have to buy my book. It's called The Bareback Investor. And, uh, <laughs> yeah, no, it, it just infuriates me because, you know, they're the first people to go, oh, always was, always will be, yeah. and capitalise on Australia Day when there's all mm. that division in the community. Yeah. Well, and then 364 days a year, they go back to not giving a fuck about yeah. Aboriginal people. Well, yeah, I was talking about this. I don't know if we did it on the, the, no, pod, we did on we the did Patreon. Patreon. Yeah, so um, we go into a little bit of depth on the Patreon, but obviously just as yeah, do it again. white cunts. But like, I'm like, all these people that want to change the date and get behind it, they wouldn't know when Reconciliation Day is. They want to fucking... They wouldn't know what fucking night up week is. Yeah. So if there was any legitimacy or any real drive behind it, it needs to be where we come together. And instead of changing the date, just acknowledge, no matter what date we change it to, it's not going to change the hurt. Like, it's not going to change what's happened. Yeah, like, it might subside a little bit and there'd be some, it would be like a good token gesture. But the real thing you want is to come together and celebrate together. So what better day than Reconciliation Day to actually in, implement a public holiday to show there's actually active change? Well, I think we forward. should move Australia Day to Halloween, to be honest. Oh, it's because less Americanized. No, because that way we can say, trick or treating! <laughs> 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 Set him up there. You know, and, but it's funny because... Because <laughs> we don't have we'll a treaty, it, hey? it's, There's inevitability about Australia Day changing and it has to change and I'm all for it. But I guarantee you all the Nancy woke mob will shut the fuck up about Indigenous land rights after that. Mm. They will have nothing. What are we going to do oh, yeah. now? What are we going to complain what about? What are we going to virtue signal for now? And I don't yeah. like that phrase, virtue. I prefer moral grandstanding, but... That's narcissistic exactly compassion is a new well, one we've come up with. Narcissistic personality disorder is what <laughs> I'm going with. But, uh, it, and it just it, it infuriates me because these people would cross the street to avoid Indigenous people. Yeah. And, uh, you know, like Cam and I, we grew up amongst around Indigenous people. We were poor, you know. We played footy together, went to school together. You know, I've seen a lot of what Indigenous people deal with through the law. Yeah. Um, and these people wouldn't know the first thing about the struggle of Indigenous yeah. people. Mm. And if you move, like what my brother sees in um, Alice Springs and fucking all the, the inner bits, it's a whole other world, man. Mm. It's a whole different fucking This is the world only game. first world country yeah. where trachoma is still a thing. And it's is that on, uh, blindness? Yeah, and yeah. it's only in and Indigenous treatable. communities. It's treatable, hey? Right? And then you see that YouTuber that's getting all that shit for fucking... Mr Beast? Yeah, for giving people access to life-changing eye surgery. Yeah. Everyone's hanging shit on him. Yeah. <laughs> How bad? What? Yeah, he's doing something good. Oh, let's hang shit on him. Fuck. Yeah, because who? Uh, what was the foundation? Fred. Fred Hollows. Fred Hollows, because yep. he was curing yep. curable blindness. Yep, the trachoma, especially yeah. out in indigenous communities. Yeah. So who needs to know about periods when you can't fucking see it? Right, like <laughs> put the money into tr- into that. <laughs> pretty pretty basic, eh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Fuck. Yeah, hundred percent. And that's where the, all the <clears throat> the money. And where it's going to, um, it's it's it seems to always just uh, it's either um, what do you, what did you it's call a band-aid it? Band-aid situation. No, well, yeah, it's moral, but moral grandstanding. It's yeah. an empty gesture, of and it's making sure people who get the money aren't going to talk about things that the mining industry and the Forest Foundation don't want you to. Mm. Right? It's like, well, you can have your money, but they're the parameters within which you will stay. Mm. And he's trying to control the purse strings in the arts in this country. Mm. Mm. Anyway, mm. they got a piece in my mind at Dave Chappelle the other night. I walked into the Mindaroo and Tatarang private box by accident. <laughs> <laughs> I love that this is by accident. Like the number one hater of them. Oh, it's no. accidentally I, found. I, it's I got accident- a neon sign. Mm. <laughs> arrows this way. Accidentally <laughs> found myself on that floor. And I was like, this is too good of an opportunity to pass up. So I've walked in. I said, are you guys the Mindaroo Tatarang crew? I'm like, yeah, yeah. And I said, you are a pack of despicable 
bloodthirsty fucking twiggers you are. <laughs> you should be ashamed of yourselves. <laughs> and then when I'd finished giving them a spray, this one goes, you're that comedian Corey, aren't you? I was like, you fucking better believe it. I Buy a th- ticket, you posh white bin. And I walked out. <laughs> I was, I was going to... I was thinking it was going to go somewhere else. Like, who the fuck's this bloke in our box? <laughs> <laughs> I'm here for some reparations. <laughs> I thought Ben Cousins sobered up. <laughs> <laughs> He's looking better than ever. Fuck, he is, isn't he? You can't even do that joke anymore. Yeah. Mate, fucking things were so bad there. Ben Cousins cleaned up his act because people <laughs> were saying, you look like Corey, Corey White. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be so funny, man. <laughs> oh, oh, fuck. fuck. Um, where were we going before? I think you wanted to talk about the world. Oh, di- and the digital yeah, ID. Yeah, digital yeah. ID. And, and um, Tony Blair telling us that we all need to... Um, oh, yeah. You, the you, Blair Bitch Project? <laughs> 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 but what? it's like, how on earth can anyone give that man a platform after he sold a war on a lie? Yeah. Weapons of mass destruction. Do you remember them, Delby? Uh, we found them, hey? The, yeah, yeah. Those ones that were real. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Mm. Did you ever see the Boondocks? No. Uh, yeah, yeah. Saints? The Boondo- uh, the the cartoon. They've got a great uh, scene where it's like Riley and Samuel L. Jackson does a cameo and they're going to do an armed robbery. He's like, I served in Iraq. He's like, Did you find those weapons of mass destruction? Like, you know we didn't find no weapons of mass destruction. <laughs> <laughs> so funny. Have you seen that? I've seen that. Um, an ex soldier, and it wasn't with Blair, with with Bush. But fucking comes into a, a Senate hearing or something and just fucking berates him, saying, You sent me to war based on a fucking lie and you knew it. The Blairfoot Bushman. Just going off. And they, I, I, I am from my chats with a few people who have been in that situation and been sent over, they hate not just him, but the people who were involved in orchestrating a fake reason to go kill a heap of fucking innocent civilians. Yeah. But didn't they just usher him out like, thank you, bye, and just fuck him off yeah. when he's standing up going mental? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah and yeah, they're yeah. just like, okay, hey, see ya. Mm. <laughs> they didn't even acknowledge yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, out you go. Out Fuck you go. day. But but this is like, sorry, go on. Well, we're seeing it happen again. It's playing out again with Ukraine. in real time in Ukraine. And this is what's funny, right? And it will forever. Well, yep. endless and war. And that's what Julian Assange said. He's like, the goal is not to win the war. It's an endless war. And it's for the transnational security elite to take money out it's of the public trans coffers. trans again, eh? <laughs> transnational. Into the private hands of the transnational security elite. Well, have you and s- it was right. Have you seen that? Um, who has been charged with rebuilding Ukraine once the war is finished? Let yep. me guess, BlackRock. BlackRock, uh, really? Goldman Sachs. Well, that was funny, J- uh, fucking Zelensky, when he came out and he was inviting all the American businesses to come and rebuild Ukraine. We have yeah. iconic American brands like JP Morgan. Yes. Goldman Sachs. Uh, yeah. Do you not remember when they plunged the world into an economic crisis because of personal fucking debt? <laughs> <laughs> I sure do. Yeah. The big short. So those say, they, they, they say people, they're also profiting off being at war. They're, they're the ones who are invested in things like they uh, Lockheed Martin. They milk from both sides, don't they? Yeah. How can I invest, man? In lo- in you, you've got to become a part of BlackRock, mate. <laughs> I yeah. Get, get I your money in Lockheed Martin, get it into Rolls Royce. Like they don't just make cars; they yeah. make all the engines for all the. Tri- yeah, yeah. 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 Like, oh. I've got a tip for you, and uh, I guess uh, it's called Drone Shield. I got in at nine cents, and they're filling orders with fucking governments around the world, left, right, and centre, for their drone and anti-drone technology. Is it on ASX? Yep, it's an Australian company. DRO is the code. Mm. Go, 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 the share price. <laughs> I got in fucking early. Pump so, and dump. Pump, pump and, pump and dump. dump. So the scary, scary thing about this whole thing, there's no winner at all in this situation. No one. Certainly not the fucking Ukrainian people. Well, and... And this is a... Let's not pretend this is not a, a, a proxy war that's been yeah. or, orchestrated. Definitely orchestrated. They've fucking said for years that they want to rid... Batman of his Robin, which is Russia of Ukraine. And it's the last place that wouldn't cave into the Western global power structure. And what I find so interesting is the transformation of the Greens in my political lifetime. Remember when Bob Bob Brown got thrown out of Parliament because he was heckling George Bush, calling him a war criminal? Mm. And it's now the Greens want to send more taxpayer money to Ukraine. It's like... It's clearly established there's neo-Nazi battalions running around. Yeah. It's clearly established that that whole country is corrupt to the fucking eyeballs mm. and you still want to camel toe the party line. And for us to have this conversation, people would say, oh, so are you, are you saying that it's okay what Russia's doing? No, I'm fucking completely condemning the war. There's no... War is the whole thing that I don't want. And for us to not even assess the opportunity to have some peace, whether, like, someone's going to lose. 
actually not someone. Everyone's going to lose. Either America wins, and I and I, it is America fucking creating this situation. Either America and NATO win and leave fucking Ukraine in ruins, and then make money back fucking rebuilding it, or Russia wins and we and, all die. And, yeah, well, and it gets to a point where Russia cannot beat NATO. They will not. They will ev- eventually get to a point where they're at a point where they have no other option but nuclear. So it'll be one way or the other. If they lose, we lose. I I disagree. And if we there. win, they if we win. We might not lose, but fucking poor Ukraine is left in ruins. NATO is certainly seeking to escalate this conflict. Mm -hmm. Um, But I think there is some minds who are changing and go, well, I'm not sure we can win this war because Russia is fucking resolute. Putin's stronger than ever. Mm -hmm. Uh, I remember, you know, eight months ago, oh, the Russians are retreating. It'll be over in two months. They're running out of ammunition. I ran into some boys from the army on the piss the other night and they said, there is no fucking chance... The Russians are losing that war. They're not. They're not losing. Um, and when I say, I mean, it will get to a point if it became a World War Three, and you've got everyone versus Russia, there will be a point out of desperation where it does get to that point where I think it'll. Well, Russia nuclear I, fallout is just the, on who Russia are. They they will not. I don't think they'll ever give in. Never. Being Russian, the whole thing is you don't. You don't give in. But, uh, well, you don't let the the country down, right? Cons- you don't surrender. Yeah, and what's concerning now is Biden sending tanks. One thing, the one thing he said, we cannot do that because because that escalates it to war. Uh, well, and that's that what they're sending to not escalate it because the, the tanks aren't going to make a fucking difference to no. that conflict, right? No. It's, uh, they're too heavy. Like They're the heaviest tanks So it doesn't make a difference, but so it'll be... they sink in the mud, right? Yeah. And just, you need huge maintenance crews mm-hmm. to be able to fucking maintain those things. It's not like you've got a tank and you can drive around for 12 months. They have an intense maintenance load that you've got, and you've got to have mechanics who are specialised on this. Like stuff. Arnold Schwarzenegger used to be and fucked well, up, and that's how he got famous. Well, it's got really? it, it was yeah, he, le- he he was he was the tank dude, and he fell asleep under the tank and left the handbrake off, and it ended up in a river. Really? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Fuck. yeah. Yeah, and then he left a body, but they're like, yeah, I think it's best that you. Are. <laughs> oh, Jesus, I think he did it twice. But do you know what's so funny is that the Germans want to send tanks across to the Ukraine. It's like, this is not great optics. German tanks <laughs> rolling across <laughs> Eastern Europe towards Again. Russia, man. Like, you can forgive the Russians for being a bit paranoid. Yeah, yeah. No right? shit. And, th- and this is more, it's not the fact that the tanks will make an impact on the war. The, it's the message that it sends to Russia, yeah. which then escalates their intentions. Who's because on Russia's side? at the moment, side? they're not, they haven't been, um, they've been keeping the main uh, infrastructure in place in all of their attacks. They're not attacking all the energy plants and all the hospitals. They've been keeping everything, the train systems and stuff. Didn't as, the British do that? As possible, as much as they possibly can. But now, they're, I think they're out of desperation starting to have to attack the uh, energy. Well, they've been hitting the power grid power for grids, a while. Yeah. I thought the British attacked the pipeline themselves. Oh, no, no, no. no that's no, Nord that's Nord that's Stream. Nord oh, Stream. Right. The that's, Russians yeah. only did that after the attack on the bridge at Crimea. Yes. Right? And the Russians have been playing this war with gloves on. Right? Because if they wanted, Kiev could have been in darkness. Flattened. They could have had no internet. They could have had no water. Mm-hmm. And they could have done it like the Americans did when they mm. invaded Baghdad. Yeah. Total war. Mm-hmm. But the Russians have been like, well, we need to win over the hearts and minds. And you don't want to fucking alienate the people you're hoping to annex effectively. Mm. Yeah. Um, and everyone says Putin's a bad guy. And it's like, yeah, okay, no doubt. You don't get to that level of politics. Yeah without being a bad guy. But he's also very funny. Mm. When everyone thought he had cancer and he came out, he did that press conference and he quoted Mark Twain. Mm. You know, so if you asked Biden to quote Twain, he would have said, man, I feel like a woman. Oh, he'd forget the lyrics completely. <laughs> right, and that's like he's banning... Ger- Remember that fucking the Russians released that list of all the people they were banning from Russia and there was Twiggy Forrest, mm. Kerry Stokes, Gina Reinhart, the editor of the West Australian... <laughs> I don't know how to tell you guys this, yeah. but it kind of sounds like my fucking hero on that. <laughs> <one>. <laughs> yeah, he's poisoned some journalists. Like, fuck, if I could put a 1080 Fox bait in Joe Hildebrand's granola. Oh, and Allegedly. Let's, let's, oh, I wouldn't fucking hesitate. But yeah. let's not pretend that Zelensky is uh, he's horrific in what he's employed just around there. He's just, he banned, he's just banned orthodox Christian... Uh, what was it? It was... Uh, it's um, the Potter Russians. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What was it? Was it banning um, Orthodox? Yeah, because Ukrainian Orthodox, Orthodox Church. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's uh, re- you're banning a religion. 
Yeah. You're burning fucking, you're, you're imprisoning your opposition. Islam would um, never do that. You're up, <laughs> but you're, <laughs> you're imprisoning your opposition uh, political leaders. You're imprisoning uh, media outlets that oppose you and criticise you. Oh, that, that sounds it, like a dictatorship to it me. It sounds like we're going in to fight for democracy for a dictator. Yeah. That's what it sounds like. Just because he's a bad guy <laughs> doesn't mean he's a bad guy. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. Fucked. If anyone wants to... Uh, understand Russia more and I recommend all of the Adam Curtis films in their entirety there's a great one called Trauma Zone and it's just a, a collage of archival fringe footage. artists after <laughs> reviews <laughs> <laughs> that would be a montage <laughs> and it would be a very large one yeah. but uh, montage. Trauma Zone and all those films they're great if you want to understand the modern world particularly Russia mm. uh, Trauma Zone I can't recommend it highly enough they're just so immersive and you, it's, it's like you'll binge watch it I guarantee yeah. you so if we're going to go back down that orchestration pathway <coughs> and it's it's hard to not start saying that everything's orchestrated because everything you say is going to happen at the start and why this is implemented 16 months 18 months 24 months down the line it starts to happen and you're like well was I right? For example, that like they're, they're trying to now use um, the Ukraine war as um, as a. I've got the article. I'll read the article in a minute. It's fucking very interesting. But it's about it, they're trying to use it to implement the future of digital currency, digital identification, and complete digital of everything. You know they're what's not- fucked about that is I know how bad it is, but it's so handy. Like it's so useful for but some of the things thing that, that we yeah, do, man. It's the convenience that's the I seduction I know, part of it. But I know about it all, my But there's man. no going back. Mm. Once we give this up, there's no yeah. going back. I and need cash to still in. exist. Well, this is where, where are the fucking tradies? Yeah. Like this affects you more than anyone and drug dealers. Yeah. I want you countries. And Italians. Of and Italians. Well, same we thing. We fucking don't want to cash. Fuck. All right. So BlackRock CEO. Of course it's BlackRock. BlackRock mm, CEO says, <laughs> says invasion, uh, uh, Ukraine invasion could be used to accelerate the use of central bank digital currencies. Um, part of the growing push for digital currencies, the CEO of BlackRock, one of the biggest investment corporations in the world, thinks that the war in Ukraine and the events surrounding it could be used to accelerate adoption of digital money controlled by central banks. Because when is that ever going to be it's a, never a good idea? A good idea. Um, in a letter to shareholders on Thursday, Larry Fink wrote that he could prove uh, that this could prove to be one of the outcomes of the war and currently uh, uh, by and large under the radar. According to Fink, whose company manages $10 trillion worth of assets, countries around the world will be re-evaluate, re-evaluating and be call, calling for digital currencies. Uh, with the onset of the war, US has, and, and their allies added Russia to the central bank of their list of ent- entities targeted by sanctions. So they're not only going to do that, mm. they're going to sanction them. They're going to China them out of their own... Yeah, yeah. Um, using Bitcoin exchanges on both Russia and Ukraine. Um, reports interpret this as a realisation that stable coins, cryptocurrencies and those market values are pegged to fiat currencies and goals can provide safety for assets and a way to evade sanctions. And it goes on like this. But mm. basically... Well, the COVID <coughs> pandemic and this war are both pushing towards digital identity. Both of them. Is it coincidence? Uh, and so this is what I was battling in my head the other day because I, I, I've i been saying this from the, the the start. This feels like this, um, this coercion into eventually being sold this idea of digital currency. Is it... We're finding these links because that's where we think it's it's going, and mm. we're drawing our own bow. Yeah. Or, uh, and like, is it just that's the way forward for the future of the yeah. world? I, I, I don't know. Maybe, but it does feel sinister. It does yeah. feel well, like we had a reprieve. The, Luckily, I never thought it was going to go away mm. when the government took back the QR codes, the scanning, the needing the digital. So they took that away. Yeah. I thought it was going to be there from this point forward. Mm. We're using this. So there was a glimmer of hope. And what did you think when you thought that? When I thought that it was, it was coming back? It was never going to be gone. Oh, I was like, this is exactly what the bloke on Joe Rogan said. The um, guy had been to um, prison in Egypt. Oh, yeah, yeah, he yeah. Came out did and you know us? Yeah. Mm. I was like, fuck, this is exactly what he said was going to happen a few months ago. And it was happening. But when it got redact- retracted, I was but like, oh, thank fuck. That was just... Maybe a kiss. I never thought McGowan would have taken that back. Yeah, but have you seen what they're doing with that same system? No. They're repurposing it. So the Australian MyGov fucking registry has 25 million people and we only mm. have like 25 point fucking 8 million in Australia. Mm. So it's got the, everyone. almost everyone in Australia on this fucking registry and they're like, it's an unusable um, platform now. 
So we've spent so much money on it, we're going to repurpose it and use it to become digital identity and digital yeah, right. currency. I'm so fucking glad I opted out of my health records. I, I opted out of that as well. I remember so when I was at uni sign, uh, you know, having to deal with it and talking to the girl on the phone, she's like, you know, you can do this all automated like voice recognition. I was like, no. Yeah. This is fucking all willy. And she's like, really? I can't believe you think that way. Mm. It's like, I can't believe you yeah. don't think that way. And so, yeah. and you say like you, 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 you're glad, and you had that glimmer of hope that it was mm. gone. But they never just it, it's you see it in his throughout history. It's never just slowly incremental. Yeah, it's yeah. slowly um, except for the mandate. incremental. It's the slow boiling of the frog, mm. right? Exactly. And you just the death. Well, even the, the mandates, cuts. even yeah. the mandates. You knew at the start. Everyone was saying you, they're going to force you to get the jab, and they're like, uh. "No, it's not. We're yeah, not going to yeah, do yeah, it." And yeah. it slowly they went, "No, actually, for the better of everyone." Yeah. Yeah, you're gonna have to. Here's an interesting mm. anecdote. So I was in the um, frog, perfect the analogy. pleasure garden the other night, and a guy who claimed to be in the senior management at Woodside mm-hmm. came over and had a chat. Um, and he says, "I've been following you stand up," and he goes, "Oh, this is what Woodside senior management think the way it went down with the jab." Because remember, it was all the companies that mandated it first. Yes, FMG came out and Twiggy did it. Then Woodside, yeah, they're all in lockstep behind, and then the government came out later on. But his view was that the government was saying, you need to go in first. So it doesn't look like it was the, them. And if you don't, you're not getting your approvals for the new projects, the Scarborough Shoal, the yeah. new mine expansions. You scratch my back and I'll scratch yours, but we're in this together yeah. as elites. You scratch my frack and, and I'll scratch yours. And that's the way some of the senior management would so I think it went down. And this that is, makes and sense and as well. Well, and this is how, was it um, George... Um, Pell? No. <laughs> uh, cut, cut. You scratch my sack and cut, I scratch yours. Um, when, he, when he was talking about it in the 60s and 70s, it doesn't have to be a grand conspiracy where they oh, all George get... George Carlin. Carlin, yeah. yeah. Uh, and where they don't get into a room and organise this mm. fucking thing. They all have similar vested interests. Just similar boards. Yeah, and they yeah. recognise the opportunity to be able to make money and and, and yeah, yeah and continue together. their power hold over, over everyone. Yeah. So it's just a, like, it's not... It doesn't have to be... Even though we know they do go to things like the World economic forum or the fucking Bilderberger group or the what's the one in the in the woods the oh yeah the bohemian grove, bohemian grove. Like and we know they do have those the meetings. bohemian rhapsody they don't need to have those meetings because you it's just vested interests of this similar is what was so interesting about one of adam curtis's films um hyper normalization he traces the rise of vladimir putin um, how did vladimir putin get into power do you know much about that well yeah look it's a long story but one of the parts of it that's really interesting is that his media man, the guy who took over the media in Russia, had a theatre background. Yeah, right. It was like fucking one of the, you know, the WAPA losers taking was over. Was it Zelensky? No. I was about to say, yeah. <laughs> no, it was a different guy. But he, what he did is he took control of the media and then funded all these opposition media groups to give it the appearance mm. of pluralism mm. and, you know, op- opposing voices. But then he let it slip that they were all funded by the Kremlin and had their strings pulled. So nobody knew what was true. And when you've got that level of information paralysis, you can't act on it because you don't know if it's real or not. So he deliberately let it slip? He deliberately let wow, it slip. Wow, that's so intelligent. And that's fucking... How do you frazzle and fragment the mind of the polity? Well, you... That's so you smart. You fuck up there... Because your communications is your centre of gravity. Yeah. So if you don't know the information you've consumed is real, how can you make a decision? Yeah. Mm. That's so smart. That's like, that's all well, that's all well. And that's what I think, you know, I saw that, um, the video at the Grammys with all the, the Satan worship stuff and then at the ad, sponsored by Pfizer. Mm. I think that's what's happening now. In order to completely fragment and prevent anyone organising on a meaningful way, it's to just keep everyone like a midget at a urinal on their toes, you know? <laughs> <laughs> I did. I can make that joke because I'm a midget. <laughs> <laughs> I've seen um, recently, uh, it might have been a couple of days ago, uh, some journalist asking Biden if he underestimated Putin. This is the first time I've seen Biden speak well in a very oh, yeah. long time. He spoke for a f- couple of minutes, and it's when that stands out, that's a concern. Mm. It's probably his clone. But it was ve- he was pretty... He was pretty um, straight down the line. I did not underestimate him. He's a fucking worthy adversary and he is not to be toiled with. Like, he is a very smart man. And for and for Biden to acknowledge that as well, it's very... Well, it, I it's think... Not often I see him speak like that. Mm. I think they're laying the ground for a retreat and some sort of agreement with Russia and there'll be a partition of Ukraine. I don't think uh, Ukraine will be able to function as a normal country now, it's broken, it's fucked. Mm-hmm. I think Poland will take 
Western Ukraine and Russia will absorb Eastern Ukraine and it will cease to exist. I feel like that's fair. Most wasn't most people well, in their Russian anyway. anyway. Do you know what I mean? It yeah. was, I mean, the uh, borders of Europe have been redrawn so much. Yeah. Mm. And it's always like, and if you look at where the Russian line is and where the language groups are, that's it's all right Russian where it is speakers, anyway. Yeah. You know? Yeah. It is a very interesting. Thing. I guess. Wow, three blokes from Perth just solved it. <laughs> but uh, I think that that's more the more the concern is that three blokes from Perth can see it what's happening, mm. and everyone. I think a lot of people can see it what's happening, but we don't have a say. We don't have a. And there's there's no like voting on this. Here with a fucking degree of certainty, right? I mean, yeah. the only certainty is uncertainty in this world. Yeah. But there's people who've got some runs on the board in terms of saying things that weren't right or this is right and have been vindicated. Mm. Nost- Nostradamus. And that creates <laughs> or, or a currency or, or trust with an audience. And mm. I think, you know, people are being rewarded. And if you want to help us get up there to find out what's really going on, join the Patreon. <laughs> and when we get a couple of billion, yeah. we can sit on these boards and leak it. Yeah. So fucking help us out. And then we can vote for Corey Wyatt for pr- Premier. When yeah. are you, are you going to go into politics? We had this chat last time. Are you still considering it? Well, I'm not giving away what I'd like to do because <laughs> there'll be people out there to fuck it up. But it's something I'm considering, yeah. That'd be yeah, fucking right. awesome. So they said you got to... You, you, all your, you have to own every skeleton you have in the closet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I oh, know, I've got... You would literally of, have to go, well, here's everything thing. I've ever done, said or sent. I'm a fucking real Eight human. Mile. And, yeah. you know, if you want people who haven't got skeletons in their closet, you're not going to have real leaders. Right. You ain't going to have to do these fucking, you know... Um, sustainably sourced you know free range fucking hens that you're going to breed as your next generation of leaders yeah. those people don't learn anything because they've never made mistakes they've yeah. never endured adversity um, but I fucking there really? would be some people who you know leak some of my text messages from the past <laughs> and going to try and fuck me over but I'll own everything I ever done the worst thing I've ever done I've been forgiven for and that person is now my friend so yeah, is that our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ? <laughs> no, no, he's a, he's a mate of mine, and he works at one of the world's biggest metals companies because he married the CEO's daughter. Nice, fuck, nice. That's so what we I need a few. Do. We need a few Jeffrey Dahmer politicians. People with skeletons in their closet. <laughs> <laughs> oh, fuck. <laughs> I did a joke about. Well, Jeffrey they came Dahmer. out of the closet. He ate them and then put the skeleton oh, back in. Oh, there we go. <laughs> he fucked a beheaded corpse. He was a no necrophiliac. <laughs> hey. <laughs> Oh my god! <laughs> I was getting some here, uh, but this uh, <laughs> that Had some is breakfast in bed. <laughs> that is true. If people were a bit more sort of like open about their their past indiscretions and yeah. like or their their motivations, yeah, and look at um, I feel like you just own it, right? I think um, we can use that with some of the situations we've seen. You look at Pfizer, you look at like BlackRock and st- these sorts of companies that are going to make fucking trillions and billions of dollars out of these projects. Instead of saying you're doing it for humanitarian purposes. Be honest. We're there for the shareholders. We're there yeah. for profits. Yeah. Um, but like, if we can help at the same time, that's how you're going to deliver it. Instead, if they were really there for humanitarian, pro- they would not be taking profit. They would be cut covering the cost, and that's it. That would be a, yeah. a humanitarian thing. Same with Pfizer, like the fucking jab. If they really cared about the planet and they really thought it was an issue and they wanted everyone to fucking uh, be safe, they wouldn't have taken profit because it was a pandemic yeah. that was. You know, Moderna the world. didn't take profit. Is that right? At the start, they shared the. Um, I can't remember. They still made profits. I think one of them said that they weren't going to take um, take any profit. They, they shared the vaccine because they were actually. Yeah, but they they all said that they were going <clears> to. <throat> they still made profit on the product, uh, so they might have shared their patent. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And their their uh, the ingredients or fucking whatever, but they didn't share the profits. Yeah. Pfizer had their most um, profitable years, profitable yeah. year in existence. Mm. Yeah, um, and they're only going backwards now. So what I did find funny was King Charles knighting the CEO of AstraZeneca. Yeah. Really? He knighted him. Wow. wow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you know what's funny? I, uh, Christmas time, I was working in the fish market and driving the truck, and I love driving the truck because I finally get to feel tall. But uh, <laughs> I was listening to 6PR, right? Uh, God, it's dog shit. But, but the, I can't turn it off, man. But the ads, <laughs> bro. Like there yeah. was this sequence of ads. So it was just like the first one yeah. was get your shot. Yeah, this was And disgusting. then the second one was about antibodies, mm-hmm. antivirals. Remember mm-hmm. that? Sponsored by Pfizer. Mm-hmm. And then the third ad in the sequence was for a law firm advertising about medical negligence. Mm. 
Yeah. What a fucking hat trick, 6PR, yeah. you lying dogs. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Was, uh, I fucking hope you're boosted too, Oliver Peterson, you doughboy. <laughs> there's, so, there's so many uh, hypocrisies going around and then contradictions and lack of... Yeah, the antiviral ads are fucking disgusting. Remember the fucking shit they put Joe Rogan through over yeah. the monoclonal yeah. antibodies? Oh. Yeah. And that was, for me was the biggest thing about it. Something it that was, worked. It yeah. was the ignoring the other treatments and early treatment. Because, oh, we don't have a patent or there's no money to be made in mm, that. Yeah. And, you know, Peter McCullough is really big on this. Yeah. And, you know, the people who spoke up have just fucking been put to the side. But, you know, in this country, if you pick the Brownlow winner at the beginning of the year, <laughs> yeah. fucking you're all over the news. So get ready to play us. So what's the, like, yeah, why was there this push? And this is where we become cynical is when there's like, hey, this actually helps. We have data to show that it helps. Um, but you're being slandered as fucking misinformation, disinformation. Oh, and it's like I saw the West, uh, Ben O'Shea had a column in it the other day about, you know, lamenting the rise of the anti vax how deranged they I saw were. that. But it's like, mate, what? you had such a big hand in this because yeah. there was a vacuum, right? Because the official narrative wasn't cutting the mustard and everyone fucking knew it. Mm. And there was no explanation from the press. Mm-hmm. There was no investigation. And that void was filled by conspiracy, mm. by telegram. And people went there because they weren't getting an explanation from the real media. Yeah. And then they go, how did this happen? Mm. It's like, well, look in the fucking mirror, you. Like. Yeah, well, sunlight is, is there the anything best form we of disinfectant. Like, let it, yeah, transparency, openness. Could we create a paper called the Hard Yarns Transparency Paper and just do like a fucking newsletter out where it's like, hey, mm. this is what we've heard. This is what we think is more in the middle. Yeah. Or just call it's, it the it's, middle. It's the always, man in the middle. It's always been like, the, and that's why I started the podcast as the real fake, fake news. news. The yeah. whole idea was to actually get some, na- and put more effort in, but to get a news article and go, hey, you've delivered it like this. Mm-hmm. That's fucking going this like way. Like Media Watch Let's, does. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That? yeah. But are they, are they legit as well? Do they actually... Oh, they used to be, mate. But yeah. look, the fucking, if there's one thing, the ABC, uh, that's the... The saddest part of the last two years for me is the death of the ABC. Mm. It was an institution I used to have trust and faith in, as with the medical profession. Mm. You know, the, yeah. And it was the last sort of institution I had any faith in. And to see what's happened, it's just broken my heart. Mm. Broken well, my heart. so does the jab. But you're lucky. <laughs> <laughs> so so you, you, missed, you missed out on that. So. Um, yeah. Another thing um, I'm, I'm seeing at the moment <clears throat> that I, 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 want, I want... Oh, yeah, oh yeah no, 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 okay. So, uh, just before we change topic, I actually feel sorry for Russian people, man. Like the amount we met in Bali. Yeah. And oh yeah, they j- they're ashamed to tell people they're Russian. The fuck, they can't even put their flags up at Australian Open. Oh, like, that, what the fuck's with that? Is there what anything is with that? more Australian than asking Novak to apologise for his father's fucking views, mate? It's peak Melbourne. Yeah. You know, I. It's got nothing to do with him. Well, that's what, mate, it happened. And I know you don't like Gina Reinhardt, but like, that's what was happening with her. They were asking her to apologise for her father's views. And I would never she ask went, anyone. Fuck you. Yeah, yeah. Well, I wouldn't. And that's where I'd go into bat for Gina, yeah. right? And, you know, this is the thing about principles. You will defend them for people you don't, don't like, like because yeah. they apply to everyone. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And, and it, yeah, you're right. But, you know, the Novak thing, I mean, fucking. There are Bosnians and Croatians who are less hostile to a Serbian man than Australians. Mm. <laughs> Which is incredible. It uh. blows my mind. <laughs> yeah. Like he's, I mean, regardless of what you think about the jab or what he did, you've got to acknowledge the fucking intestinal fortitude and courage it took for him to do what yeah. he did mm. and the triumph. Yeah. yeah. The fucking triumph. He had played a three centimetre tear in his hammy. Allegedly. 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 Yeah. He didn't so. look too fucking hindered. Did yeah. He? Yeah. He was, uh, but, yeah, for, for, for us as Aussies, man, who pride ourselves, who probably now didn't even... Most people were ashamed of the Aussie flag on Australia Day. It was a very odd feeling. Yeah. This year was the first year I felt very... Mate, I walked through the city back from a gig about 10.30 and I could just feel... Violence. The tension. Well, you yeah. saw it. on that. There was. Yeah. And, and the, the, the cops were in a big, long um, riot line. And that's not good for the optics anyway. No. Why do you want to fucking start... Riot and violence on a day where we're starting, we're trying to acknowledge that it's been a fuck up in the past. I did like Bitter Beliefs uh, post about it. I don't know if you've seen that. Just like respect each other's sort of opinions and and um, and respect each other mm. as much as possible because um, yeah, the, the last thing we need is more division. Yeah, 
Ah, and what were you saying, Cam? I think you were, me and you were chatting about the other day. We just changed the flag, get rid of the Union Jack. Yeah, there's little. If you're gonna do tokenism, do make, get fuck off the Union Jack, put the Indigenous one there. Then the whole country's under one flag. Yeah. And the other one that I, I used to do a stand a bit about is like I, I grew up in Midland, poor kid from Midland. Why the fuck did I learn Italian for twelve years? Yeah. When the fuck am I ever going to Italy? Why aren't I learning Nunga? And we talk about oh, it's like we, it's a forty thousand years of been talking in this area That's for that language. Why isn't that taught? Because the, the class was called Lot. Language other, other than, than English. English. It's mm. all just about learning another language. Learn one that the, our country's actual language. Yeah. And I understand there's 400 different language groups and I understand that we fucked it up in the 40s and ripped all the people apart, but yeah. there's still people who know how to speak Noongar. Yeah. Why isn't that taught in Perth See, schools? Being in the education system, we've tried to implement that and to find an elder that actually knows... Um, Noongar fluently is very difficult. It might take a couple of years then yeah. to sit down and actually nut out and they'll go, right, these are the grammatical rules. These yeah. are what these words use. They do. Like, this is what Dadi is. This is what Anna. This is, like, go through it all. Like, yeah. write down and have at least the base of it. Because why Why can I go, Mi chiamo Cameron, come stai? So when you can talk to me. Use that? Hey, with, I, with me on stage. I know that one as well. Yeah, yeah. Like, Even the Cameron part. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but like, yeah, they, they, just those, yeah. if you're going to do tokenism about it, just do those two. Teach Noongar in schools and yeah. take the Union Jack off the flag and put the Indigenous be there yeah i mean changing the flag would be an awesome i think because what do we have to do with england now not a whole lot except for my mum but we, like <laughs> why did we stay last time Referen- like with we the referendum, did a vote. yeah, but why? why, why I, what, I think it's also a concerns? security thing because yeah. if you, mm. why we're part of the Commonwealth. We're, we've got India, we've got fucking Canada, we've got the UK. We're all part of. Without mm. them, we're just a sitting duck for China. And our financial. But that was We'd the argument in the Second World War that we need a great and powerful friend. Well, the British didn't come look after us. No, they had their own. You yeah. Yanks did, eh? And was it the Yanks? Yeah, that came? yeah. yeah. The, the same thing. Us. The same thing will happen again, right? Yeah, yeah. We've yeah. never had our own defence industry. We've never been able to defend ourselves. We had a great and powerful friend we relied on, and. History will repeat in a different way. Well, maybe way. if we just say, China, we feel unsafe. <laughs> <laughs> if you could well, just not be so aggressive. This is one thing I learned, right? I didn't realise how terrified Asian people were of a white bloke who didn't wear a mask. <laughs> like, <I laughs> Even would, Michael Jackson wore a mask when he toured. Right, I walked <laughs> was ahead my favourite Asian dumpling condiment shop there when uh, the masking was on and I was social barebacking like a hero. Yeah. And I walked in, I just, the fear, man, they couldn't get away from me quick yeah. enough. Yeah. You know? and it's just like Godzilla's walk in with fucking 10 positive PCR tests. That's, like, the, that's the reverse <laughs> racism because people were like that towards Asia when it was like the Wuhan thing. Yeah, well, like, maybe so that's, that's what we can fully do to flipped defend it on ourselves you on the Chinese. Yeah. It's like, nah, sorry, we got COVID and yeah. even the animals have COVID now too. <laughs> Show up with guns and no mask and they all surrender. <laughs> 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 um, you know, uh, you talk Ukraine before, we talk about, um, <clears throat> you know, uh, the Nord Stream 2, for example. Mm. And so we see this fucking... This, posturing by the US government in ways that we need to be climate conscious and and doing everything we can to uh, benefit the, the or a green future or whatever they want to fucking put it off as. But then they go on and let's put, no one can tell me that they weren't involved or have played some sort of part in it. Blow up Nord Stream 2 and create the biggest natu- uh, environmental disaster in history. Mm. Yeah, Isn't well, that I don't quite think a it was that bad in terms of you know environmental catastrophes. I don't think it was up there with Exxon Valdez or what it, happened in Mexico because it was a gas. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, so it's gone out and it's bubbled. But in, in in regards to what they're they're saying is the biggest threat to one hundred percent. It's 100%. it is the big. They've they've contributed more than and that, that was methane. Been, yes. and methane has a twenty times higher ca- greenhouse effect than carbon dioxide. Yeah. So if they're saying that we're that close, we're on the edge, and then they go and do that themselves. Please. Billions of metric tons of methane into the atmosphere. Has it been so proven to be them, or is it? They said they were going to do it. They, it, it got yeah. done, and then they blamed Russia on fucking up their own thing. Yeah. So no if you sense. say you're going to do it, and then you do it, and then it happens, it's own it. Just fucking own yeah. it. Yeah. Well, the scuttlebutt is that they outsourced it to the Brits. Mm. Yeah. Got the Brits to do it. Imagine being the bloke that had to go do it, man. Where's your moral compass? You <laughs> Wasn't their argument they couldn't? They didn't have the technology to do it. That's ridiculous. <laughs> they didn't have well, the if they don't have the technology to blow up a fucking gas pipeline, we didn't go to the. It's moon. thirty meters under. It's only like thirty meters down. It's not even deep. Yeah, it's not. Some deep people water. can hold their breath that long. <laughs> 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 
fuck me. Yeah, just got did. squirrely down there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> fuck you, Nordstream. Oh, fuck. And if Nordstream do want to sponsor the podcast, yeah. Nord are looking at <laughs> Nord VPN. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, you can stream point, with no one knowing. It's Nord. Point, I can't get a fucking cent in grant money from the Commonwealth State Government, so fuck it. Where am I going to go? Yeah. Mm. Russia, if you're listening. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't it funny, though? The Ukraine border is such a fucking sacred line that cannot be crossed but then their own border at home we see the biggest b- fucking influx and we spoke about this in the Patreon oh, the and at f- yeah. the, the, the border crisis at the, at the at the southern border is is hilarious in certain ways when they ship them off to their own fucking what was, what's that little um, Martha's Vineyard Martha, which was hel- hilarious to see the reaction but <coughs> this is what I spoke about on the Patreon and I want to talk about it again because I, I, th- I think it's pretty uh, relevant that, yeah pretty relevant we talk. We see the uh, the people who have been coming across the border for the last ten, fifteen years out of desperation, and really need that they, they need they're, they're fleeing a fucking either war torn country, drug cartels, fucking poverty, whatever. They they're desperate to get out of their country over the last ten, fifteen, twenty, thirty years, seeking a new life. Just fucking so grateful for the opportunity to get to a country like America and be there. Now we're seeing the borders are just open. They're just fucking an open thing. There's no vetting. You can just cross and get in no matter what. You're going to get paid when you get here. This isn't a thing where we have desperate people anymore. We have people, they're now complaining about the conditions of the hotels that they're staying in. They're being paid and they're getting free accommodation in $300 a night hotels. If you are that desperate and fleeing you know, poverty or war-torn countries or drug cartels or fucking... You're just grateful to be there. Just right? grateful yeah, to yeah. be there. So what we're seeing is that... And it's diluting the real problem because there are real people who have real fucking issues with poverty and fucking mm. those yeah. sorts of issues that I just said. So you... And we're seeing this in a lot of different fucking issues around the world at the moment, but you're diluting the very real problem by fucking just Could opening you, it up to everyone. you imagine the trip advisor? Yeah. Fucking, this hotel had a bed and running water. Yeah. And nobody was trying to kill me. Yeah. One star, I had yeah. a bed in Mexico. And so you like, see, that, and they're wearing, you know, pretty reasonably nice clothes. And it's it's not like these people are seeking refuge out of desperation anymore. They're seeking refuge because they know they can come here, come here, go to America and get paid. Who would have thought Fuck. Donald Trump knew what he was doing? <laughs> well, it, it's funny, man, that whole immigration debate. Because I remember when I was at uni. And that was the hot button political issue. Mrs. Hanson lefties. was it big and, and you know boat people yeah. and all that. I remember yeah. Do we still have boat people? No. Like I never hear a peep well, anymore. Look, this is what no one wants to admit, right? That the Operation Sovereign Borders and that you know, it's a deterrent, right? Because mm. if you come to Australia by boat, we'll lock you up indefinitely at Manus Island, yeah. right? I remember when the gays are talking about our human rights to get married, and now they've stopped talking about human rights. Cucks. Anyway, <laughs> I digress. Yes. I don't think it was but just the guys. <laughs> immigration, you know, it was the hot button issue. I remember being at uni doing this ethnic conflict in multiculturalism, you know, and there was these two Swedish guys in the class. I remember in the tutorial they were talking about afterwards, it's like, you know, we're an ethnically homogenous com- country. We've been the same race structure for thousands of years. Beautiful race structure. And we had, you know, these... Um, left-wing politicians who were very high-minded and had very good intentions, right? This is not, you know, a malicious thing, but they're like, we've opened our doors to people and then, you know, traditionally we have two, maybe three kids in our country, but we've opened the door to cultures that have five and seven kids and we're rapidly becoming a minority group in our own country. You know who they need, Corey? And they didn't, you know, they don't assimilate, they have ghettos. So it, it's a very intractable problem, but... It's not. It wasn't racist for those people to say we've got an issue with immigration, mm. but they were portrayed as such. Yeah, and uh, that's something I've sort of been thinking about a lot lately. Is that you know, like imagine if that did happen to the Swedes, mm. you know, and that's why there's a very strong right wing undercurrent in Scandinavia now. I think we need to send over the cum chaplain. <laughs> 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 Come here, I'll give you some white face. <laughs> But yeah, yeah I, I just I really think that well, it's the same as France, Paris, and um, Italy as well. Right. You so. see, the internet just went out in Italy yesterday as well. Did really? It? I did not right. see that. This is how they're going to fucking bring in the digital currency oh, and yeah. uh, IDs. I think it's going to be I there's d- an internet <laughs> outage and fucking because imagine if the internet went down in this society, how long it would take for fucking anarchy to take root? Not like, long. I yeah. reckon four days. Yeah. I would, uh, yeah, no internet, no communication, No banking, no money, except for the Italians have a fucking a cash. 
bars. What would you What would you do? I don't know if the wogs would take on the ID, man. There's too many nonos and nonos. Like, too difficult. My grandson, he sorted this for me. I don't even know if the information would get out there enough because a lot of people we, rely on um, not even not even like uh, aerial TV. They rely on digital internet mm. TV. So it would take a lot of people don't even have it. And the only way you'd be able to make a phone call is someone's got a landline. Mm. Who's fucking got a landline anymore? My well, well, mum and dad, but they moved non, the non, time. Non, non. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so yeah, these are a thing. If you were to shut, you don't have to shut down power. You don't yeah. have to shut down electricity. You shut down internet for <laughs> fucking two days. Well, Mate, watch what, fucking society and you can collapse. Dis- you can disseminate any news you want because you own all of the all of the things that are now that. People that didn't want government, you, you've got Telegram, you've got Rumble. When that's gone, all there is is transistor radio, which the government can control, and mainstream media. So there's no e- now, external information coming through. Do you, do you remember when Facebook shut off the news on, for Australia? Mate, that was the day after I did the Triple M interview and I couldn't share that fucking <laughs> Triple M interview. It was, it was... What did they do? They shut off, so for like four or five days. Was it a mistake? No, nah, on purpose. But Australia mistake. was trying to get Facebook to pay. That's right. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, um, and yeah, it was actually, for me, incredible. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't have to see all this shit because I don't watch the news. I didn't see all this other shit that people comment on and so you see the related, oh, Corey commented on this and then you're like, fuck, oh, now I see this article and now it's stirring me up or mm. whatever. I didn't see anything. I didn't see nothing. No. Didn't even see sports news. I saw nothing, and because I had no, I did, had no um, real sort of need to go into like abc.com or sportsbet.com and go on the internet. I felt quite mm. nice. But news I is can, so negative. But I can see that, and that would be the one positive I'd find out of no internet. But the the, the society would fucking. It'd be fuck. You'd have to jerk off using your imagination. So that's the fucking biggest travesty of all. Well, I, I tried that the other day, Delby, and it was not great. Made in my life. <laughs> you, you've stopped porn? I haven't watched porn for fucking nearly it, a year. Already. Really? What are you jerking off over now? Just like Imagination Hub, bro. Fuck. It's or I don't jerk, and I'm just saving it. You know? Yeah, it's yeah. Because yeah. like, uh, it apparently increases your testosterone levels if yes. you don't jerk off. I've uh, I've I've adopted a very well, similar I must be approach. A fucking little bitch at the moment. <laughs> have, you, have you tried giving up porn, Delby? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. How'd you go with it? Um, it's interesting, hey, how much of a whole I missed the storylines. No, I <laughs> I just, uh, it just, if I'm perfectly candid, it just made my load bigger at the end of the week. It didn't change like, how you thought? Um, not really. But did you end up going, well, if I'm not watching this porn, I'm not going to jerk off and then I'm going to use my time more efficiently in something else? No, nah, it only takes me a minute to get a load. <laughs> <laughs> so, but you know, I, I think it was, I... I think it has an effect on your um, ability to maintain erections because you're getting so used to more and more graphic and when you get reality, if it doesn't match what your brain's been accustomed to coming to. And then what, almost, about, what yeah. about what about sex itself? Did it did it de- What's that? <laughs> did it um like desensitize that? Like make it not as in- enjoyable <laughs> because it's not as I don't think so. Not for myself. Because I wasn't hooking up thinking fuck I wish I had some porn to watch right now I'm like this is I'm here in this moment yeah but that's not what you your subconscious would be like so I, I noticed something when I probably watched yeah, yeah. too much porn um, I, unless this was the picture perfect girl that I searched and found on the internet Lena <laughs> I would be like uh, I, I'd start to notice uh, a lack of a lack of not performance what, what's the word I, I, I wouldn't be able to get as fucking hard yeah and um, sometimes couldn't even fucking blow because yeah. it, it wasn't it, matching. I, yeah, it wasn't matching what I'd turned into my sexual fantasies. The porn yeah. industry. So I had to stop or not stop. Horrific. Like I, I'm not. Yeah. It's not you, perfect. I can tell you the porno that made me give it up. Right? <laughs> Was it the trout? No. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't the trout. I'm a little t twat, short was, and trout. Because uh, I mean, the, the porn industry's got a reputation. Yeah. It's funded by wankers. And uh, anyway. <laughs> There was this girl. <laughs> That's good. <laughs> I, this, I can't believe I'm going to say this. But yeah. She was diddling herself mm. with a Ukrainian flag dildo. <laughs> Fuck off, cunt. And I was serious? like, if that's how far the propaganda goes, I'm fucking out. If we're even invading the vaginas. She's a super spreader. <laughs> oh, my God. Is that legit? Fuck legit, off. Legit, man. I've got a screen. I took a photo of it. 
Oh, oh it's just God. like, this has killed my oh, heart. Oh, no, Ukraine's crossing the border. This, this is war propaganda <laughs> trying to invade my erection. <laughs> it's war co- whore cockaganda. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> I know you love a good pun, Corey. I oh, love a good pun. <laughs> that's yeah. it. That's so funny. That's what well, a year ago it made you give up porn. Yep. Yep. Fuck and it. Was, and you know what's so funny about the war in Ukraine was the propaganda was disseminated the exact same way and through all the same channels that the COVID stuff was. Yeah. And yeah. then there's like people, you know, oh, we're done with the face mask profile picture. Now it's I uh, stand with Ukraine. And yeah. it was all the same the messaging, same, people. same image and the same people, man. I mm. hate that companies get on board. Like keep your fucking business yeah. interests. So I've got Wix for my website and it's like, we stand with Ukraine. I'm like, I don't give a fuck, bro. Just yeah. fucking look after my website. Yeah. What? So what is the, what is the similarity there? Because well, it was the same power structure and it was yeah. the same methodology and it was, Weaponized shame and fear yeah, 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 through yeah. the same through the same channels and the same people who were like I stand with Dan Andrews are like I stand with Ukraine but the reality is you lie with both of those cunts. So, and I guess it's it's one of it's <clears throat> evident of if you are like, even if you're right leaning and you watch nothing but Fox News for example you're going to think a certain way if you uh, mm. if you don't even know what the fuck Fox News is and all you'll do is watch mainstream media you're going to think a certain way mm. and yeah. so I guess the people who you don't, even, you don't even know that you're thinking that way. Yeah, you yeah, just yeah, yeah. like, oh, that, that's what it is. Like I'd have conversations with my dad who's very like open either way, but he watches the news all the time and he'd say, yeah, no, nah, this is fucked, hey. And I'd be like, yeah, but what about that? And he'd be like, oh, it's funny. I though, didn't know that. People yeah. absorb this shit subconsciously through osmosis mm. and then I've had conversations with people and they repeat things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They've heard and they go, That's not your own thought. Yeah. That's yeah. something you've just regurgitated that you've overheard mm-hmm. from someone whose opinion you defer to. Yeah. Well, I've I- had conversations with people and they repeat things and it's not... <laughs> <laughs> Classic, <laughs> I, I was waiting for Branch's face to change. I, just, just, I think he wasn't even listening to yeah, I, I got the... Yeah. Um, <laughs> I, I, yeah. But oh. that happened with my grandparents again. I tried to highlight the Ukraine and Russia thing. I'm like, it's not all one way. It's not all like Russia's fault. Yeah. And they didn't, honestly, like it almost caused a fight. Mm. And I'm like, all right, well, look, I'm not going to talk. But on the flip side, we could be wrong on the information we're getting. Well, I was ju- and well. that's what I was just going to say. Like, um, I, am, am I looking at the same? So I'll watch a fucking, uh, I'll go through shorts now. And I never, ever watched Andrew Tate. I never, ever watched all of this any of his stuff but now I'll, I'll flip through it and because someone started the whole fucking controversy about uh, Andrew Tate started coming out I started going right I need to find out about this guy make my own opinion on mm. it but I see oh, because now I'm watching it I'll, I'll like start thinking like that and I'm getting worried am I um, empathising with what he's saying because I'm or watching that little tidbit, same with like a Jordan Peterson. Am I am, am I having my own opinion, or am I letting them formulate my opinions on mm. the life? I, I loathe Andrew Tate because of his materialism and the way he worships money. Yeah, you know, uh, that's, yeah, I'm that's very against materialism. Disgusting. And yeah. then there's the views about women, which yeah. you know, like there's you know most of the things I find that he says are repugnant, but there are some things that I go, that's there's a kernel of truth to that. I feel mm. like there's a lot of truth and to a lot that he says. This is the thing. I mean, everyone's going, how are all these young men? got all these ideas well it's because you haven't given them a better one and for 10 years the cultural conversation has been waterboarding men yeah yeah, with yeah. you're the fucking problem yes there's no place for you going forward yeah you ruin the world and it's like well alienating a generation of young men do you what think do you that's going to be a fucking good thing for society mm. no give them a better idea mm. someone better to listen to but it this is what and this is what the fucking the laughter at Dave Chappelle was like for the, the hokey wokies. They have lost a cultural election in a landslide mm. and they cannot deal with the humiliation of having your worldview utterly rejected. Mm. Mm. And they hate it. That's a clip, Delby. <laughs> That's a yeah, clip. I, I didn't need a pun there. <laughs> 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 That's tr- you, you're 100% true. Instead of uh, shouting down why they're wrong... Give him a better example of what well, they could be. But look what happened to because uh, Jordan Peterson's gone off the deep end for me. Mm-hmm. But I can understand why he did. I mean, look at him, and there's a there's a darkness to him. And all he wanted to do was help young men who'd yeah. been alienated. And he was fucking kick pillar to post yep. all across the West. Mm-hmm. All the fucking establishment press hated him. We're always trying to get him with gotcha moments. Mm. And look what he's turned into. Mm. Carnival, uh, baby. <laughs> well, and you know, he's shilling for the Israelis and, and Ben Shapiro and he's straying into areas that aren't his expertise. But yeah. he 
wanted to help young men yeah. and he was demonized for it mm. and Fuck. what's going to happen to the young men who changed their lives because of jordan peterson now yeah where are they going to go where mm. next mate we're just trying to help young men <laughs> They're going to come to the Hard Yarns podcast and yeah. share this with your friends. I like to think we're a good uh, example Balanced. of balance. Yeah, of balance of being like, yeah, we're sort of on that masculine... Um, toxicity side. Toxicity <laughs> side. But we also have that vulnerability and honesty to, to be well, a... The main feedback we get is that we are vulnerable and we express ourselves well yeah. and are open. Which So Andrew, that's not a very masculine trait. And if you listen to Andrew Tate, that's that's because of the the, the softening of our generation. And I, do, uh, I would disagree with that side of mm. what he says. I do I think we are getting softer as a generation. Mm. And I do... Uh, I do think we are creating fucking entitled, um, uh, you know, kids that cannot fend for themselves. We're going to create a, chi- a generation of children who have children and we're going to be an infantile society. Well, mm. we're already at that point I as agree. an ex-teacher. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I the agree. parents are just trying to be their, bu- their kids' buddies and not their parents. They act, they act like children that have children. That, and, and the that next was, generation you know, is going to be... I don't want to speak ill of my parents, but there was a flaw in my dad's parenting and his relationship with me is that he was probably too much of my friend and not enough of my dad. Mm. You know, And I could reflect back and look on my childhood now. I remember the arguments you know, that my parents used to have you know, about it and my mum you know, going, pleading with my dad you know, to be more of a father and... Mm. He didn't want to be a disciplinarian and fucking look what happened. <laughs> <laughs> Whereas my dad, on the other hand, well, our fuck us up, man. Our dads were Well, nothing. it's about balance, <laughs> isn't it? Do you know what I mean? Yeah. And you can't create this, you know, feel-good heebie-jeebies thing for kids. They need to learn adversity. Yeah. You need to overcome things. Mm. And this is why, um, I, and I think what me and you both benefited from was having that on the dad side. Mm. And then the mum, very empathetic, helpful. It's almost like gender roles played a part. Well, yeah. And we talked about this with Chelsea the other night, the, mm. the, the, the gender roles. And she argued, obviously, that it doesn't necessarily have to be a man and a woman as long as the two roles are being serviced. Mm. I, I probably I tend, agree with that. I tend yeah. to agree. But um, for broad masses, it's going to be a, a male and a female. So as, as long as you know, you're having that dis- disciplinary... And like I'm in the elk of my dad was probably a bit too hard on me I felt like he's very strict very disciplined um, he wasn't like abusive didn't fucking beat me up but he definitely probably corporal, corporal punishment was still a fucking thing like a good fucking belting was every now and then um, and it made me like I feel pretty bulletproof in life you are pretty bulletproof in life and I think that's because we had the, the good and bad of but not good and bad the the, the, the discipline discipline and emotion and emotional connection yeah. as well so we well, had both sides my mum was fucking so laid back kind hearted and empathetic just like your mum from mm. what I can tell every time I've met her and your dad was fucking the, you disciplinarian know, didn't put up with shit just same with my dad got home from work that was it and this is why having both sides of that story is fucking what, important what about you Cam? What's your opinion? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. There's a lot. Like my dad taught me how to take punches, <laughs> um, but also on this, fl- like I don't know. I got a lot of forgiveness for him because I don't reckon I could have done a better job and stuff. But yeah. I, especially like with my sister dying at eleven, like our whole family, like all that kind of thing was thrown out the window. Yeah, and so I was kind of like. The trauma zone. Yeah, yeah 100. Yeah. So it was more like, I don't know, like it wasn't a traditional, like you'd look at, like, especially doing when I did social work, and it looks like, oh, I could have been removed from that house a few times. Yeah, right. right? But it's like, I, I guarantee, I, I, in my heart of hearts, my dad did the best he could do. Yeah. Well, do you, it's, it's, sorry, go on. No, oh, I was going to say, do you think, um, it, like, because you've turned out into a really, what I think, or what I would call a decent human being, a really good person, and do you think, had he not done that, you may have changed? That, that's so why I always can't. wonder: Did I become who I became in spite of how I was raised, mm. or because of it? It's interesting because if isn't it was it? because of it, it's like, all right, cool. I'm going to fuck myself. <laughs> 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 like, yeah, but I don't know. But yeah, especially like yeah, just again, my I'm almost at the age where my dad was when he lost an eight year old daughter. Yeah, and it's like I couldn't handle that right now, and then yeah. raise another two kids. One yeah, of them's disabled. Oh be poor and barely be able to put food on the table. Your wife's working night shifts, so you're not even seeing your partner. Like, mm, yeah. there's a lot that my dad went through. I'm like, fuck, man, I'm so proud that you we yeah, mm, got you this far. I mean? And you don't really appreciate it as a kid. It's only when you're an adult that yeah. you kind of reflect on it. And you know, it's easy to be harsh on your parents, but. Yeah. I mean, I think about it now, the same up what you were saying, Cam, you know, this age, my dad had two houses, two kids, a failing marriage mm. and, you know, a job that he hated and he went out and he fucking did it and he still, you know, made time to come to the footy where I was playing or yeah. take a surfing and, 
you know, it's yeah. uh, it's easy to be harsh on your parents, but you look back and I've got friends who talk generation. about this. They go, I, my father was cold and shit at home, but he had such a hard job. He came home and he's like, fuck, he's got his wife in his ear, do yeah. this, do that. And it's just like, yeah, it's, it's not how I envisioned my life, you yeah. know? At my age, my dad at my age, I was 12 or 13. Chris was 11 or 12 and Jamie was eight or nine. Mm. If I had that now... I would be fucking bananas. There's no chance I could deal with that. Mm. But the thing about the wife going bananas, man, this is just a complete aside that popped up yesterday at the gym. I posted it on my story. Bro, yeah. bro, you need a good marriage, man. This guy was a builder. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Mate, I've seen he's, you. Like, he's, well, I can't get... My clients are going to flip it, but my wife's going to fuck bro, it out of head. He, <laughs> was, he was obviously like a successful builder and he's got all these clients. He didn't give a fuck about his clients. It was his wife that he was pissed off about. He's on the phone, mid-workout, he goes in. I've walked in with him and he's like, listen, mate, you're telling me June. Now it's July. Now it's bloody August. Forget about telling my clients. My wife's already chewed me out twice in the last 15 months. Yeah. I've got to fucking tell her again. I don't know how I'm going to handle it. Her blowing up, chewing my fucking ear off, mate. I'm like, why is that his concern? I why think I think that's not? I think the like your wife and your partner and your kids and stuff, they're the ones you spend all your time with. And so if if they're the ones that yeah. you're sort of letting down or upsetting, they're the ones who are gonna Yeah. He goes, I've got to let my clients down, then I've got to go home and cop it from my fucking wife. Yeah, so if you He's go going, what, can, what am I doing? Yeah, you can get you can leave your clients. Yeah. You can lose a client. <laughs> who gives a fuck? But like if you go home and you've yeah, you're living with them, you're yeah. fucked. Well mate. it's funny you say that because I've been doing this bit in my show about uh, Socrates. Because you mean plenty of weddings, right? And yeah, nice, relevant. <laughs> all the <laughs> yeah. fucking speakers at a wedding, right? They'll quote Plato. Yeah, yeah. Happy wife. Hey, Ollie happy Peterson. Life. Oh, different Plato. And anyway, uh, but so I was preferred the so philosophy of Socrates. And Socrates famously had a wife with a notoriously foul temper. And when he was asked why he married her, he said a good horse trainer needs to practice on the most mean spirit. Oh, of my God. <laughs> And to think that the entire foundation of Western philosophy and civilization and the Socratic method is predicated on a guy whose wife was such a fucking nightmare. <laughs> he had to spend all day walking the streets of Athens picking holes in people's logic. <laughs> so I get home, he's like, I want to go to Eleusis with the boys. Like, uh, Socrates, my parents are coming, we're picking grapes. Right? It's on the calendar. <laughs> Hang your robe up where I told you. He's like, Fuck. Oh fuck! <laughs> was he the one that put himself in shit and lived in a bin and didn't wash? No, nah, that was Diogenes. Who was it? Diogenes. Diogenes. Yeah, right. Fuck. Happy wife, happy life. Me and Cam figured out the other day what's good is what's good for the goose is good for the gander. We didn't Mate, know. Blew my mind. Yeah. I thought the gander meant a group of gooses. Like, so what's so good for one's good for the, everyone. That's it, what I thought. Gander nah. is a male goose. What's good for the girl is good for the guy. Yeah. <laughs> we learned that from Squirrely. We learned that from Squirrely on the, on, the, on the New Year's Eve Patreon. Yeah. What? Yeah. The gander is the male goose. If it's yeah. good for the goose, it's good it's for, for the, the gander. gander. So that's happy wife, happy life for geese. Holy fuck. Yeah. Yeah, we thought what's good for one is good for everyone. But it's not. It's not the three musketeers. This is a bit of avian philosophy coming through <laughs> the hard yarns, guys. Where else are you going to get that sort I of concept? It, learning about the birds through the birds. Oh, my Lord. Birds, we just need the bees now. The birds and the bees. I, I mean, I just had my first conflict with anyone um, in about 18 months the other day. And I don't, I haven't had, I've been conflict free. And I realised it was, uh, like, I don't have conflicts with people anyway. I'm pretty very conflict free. And when you have, a like, a wife and you're living with them, you naturally, and this is anything on like me and Steph, this is just all relationships. Mm. Yeah, you have your, you know, you know, push fucking, your yeah, your fights and your fucking arguments and stuff like that. When it you felt so good to not have any of that for a year and a half. When I had my first conflict again, it's only temporary for a couple of hours. I felt like shit when I was like, fuck, I, I don't want that anymore. Maybe, yeah. maybe I don't need uh, like, and it doesn't matter which new wife or fucking person I bring into my life. It's going to happen again. Yeah. Well, it's because you spend, Insane amount of times. Yeah, because it's, it's not, not that natural. it's a woman and, and a man. It's just thing. like, yeah, yeah. yeah. Even with your mates, the more time you spend, like, there's always something that annoys you. Oh, I, my best mates. Mm. Like, I've lived, I've lived with a lot of housemates, and eventually, at some point, something annoys you about mm. them. And, and it's just so small. Yeah. How the fuck do you think? Because I feel I live alone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> always alone. Happy. My own thoughts. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> 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 so <you hate> yourself. <laughs> Like, even thinking about the birds and the bees as a saying, we've just done the birds like goose, good for the gander. The bees. Everyone does it for the queen. 
So yeah, it's like you want a matriarchal society, but you know what that is? <laughs> it's it's a woman in there taking loads, pumping out kids, kids. while the blokes go out well, do all work. the fucking work, yeah. right? And then if they got to defend the colony, they die. Show me the honey, <laughs> yeah, right? And you <laughs> want a matriarchal society? Yeah. Mm. Wow, we've just cracked a few of life's fucking. Science, it's the interesting thing about matriarchal societies because a lot of indigenous uh, tribes were matriarchal societies. But power wasn't in the hands of the younger women in the tribe. It mm. was with the older women. You know, they were the ones making decisions. Because they've like, gone through menopause and they're not effective. Is it? Is it? Well, the, I'm convinced, <laughs> and I don't want this to sound misogynistic, <laughs> but it is. <laughs> no, it's not. But I'm convinced that's why the Greeks didn't let women vote. <laughs> <laughs> like, I'm, I don't agree with it because I know lots of very smart women who can rise above their hormones yeah. and they should be allowed to vote and they yeah, run rings around 100%. blokes their respective professions. But, <laughs> like, I'm not, I used to have a girlfriend and her mum used to say pregnant women shouldn't be allowed to vote. They're fucking insane. Yeah. And, like, women say these sorts of things. Yeah, so yeah, like, yeah. You've got internalised misogyny. You're just one of them. It's yeah. like, no, no, she has a different opinion and she's aware of how her behaviour is affected by hormones. Yeah. You're not allowed to have a different opinion yeah, these days, that's mate. right. That's Just right. So, you know, no, no to, room for difference no, of opinion. I know. No room for... Look, mate, we just had a fucking carnivore on and that has been very polarising yeah. for we a lot will, of people. We will get an opposite view. Yeah, and, but the, the, we will get an opposite view. We've had V... We have Tash Peterson on. Mm. Very different thing, health conscious, but, um, like, this is the thing. I think we'd, we do it pretty well is we're able to have on anyone that... I, 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 we even discussed getting a feminist on the other day to have an open just... <laughs> what? <laughs> we even discussed getting a feminist on the other day, like a really strong feminist, to like have a chat to. Because I think you need to be able to have a good open dialogue with people that you don't necessarily well, agree Well, and with. this is my thing, right? If you're afraid to sit down and discuss things with your ideological enemies, mm. you're afraid you might be wrong. Yes. Mm. You know? And, it's like and I'd, I'd... and So true. This is, this is not me saying I don't like feminism, but just like potentially some of the things that me and Delby say could be very... Um, I love, they could be I love women. They could be considered uh, misogynistic. But, but see, lots of women feel this way about modern feminism. Yes. Just like m- lots of gays feel this way about the whole fucking pink dollar, you know, yeah, yeah, negative yeah. queering of the culture. And mm. they don't feel represented by it. Yeah. And they also see it as portraying the group that they belong to in a negative light. Yeah. And this is, I've been thinking about this myself because all the women I'm really close to are alpha women who don't really like other women. Uh, all the Jewish friends that I've got that don't really like Jews... My gay friends don't really like the gays, and it's like, well, am I attracted to people who have inner self-loathing, <laughs> or is it, or is it just people who won't submit their individual identity to the group, to the herd morality? And I think that's what it is. I don't know. We don't like Australians, which yeah, <laughs> yeah. Well, but I, I love my okay. country. I just fucking hate the people who run it. But you're yeah. right. It goes back to what I was saying before. Those sorts of <laughs> those sorts of exaggerations of the issues dilute the real problems yeah. that mm. some of them are having. And then uh, you, you see that with the ice skater the other day that didn't want to do the, um, he didn't want to wear the pride jersey. Yeah. Oh yeah, the ice in hockey. the warm up, ice hockey, ice skater, ice skater. Yeah. Sorry, the ice hockey. I, I think they'd was be that in the pride jersey. One? <laughs> no, no, it was just a normal. Yeah, and he ice had his guy. religious beliefs. So, and, and now his there was jersey is outsold every other jersey in the NHL because yeah. there was there was uproar about it. And he said, "Look, I have I respect anyone's right to celebrate whatever they want, but my yeah. my religious I have my religious beliefs, and I'm going to even stick if to it that. wasn't religious, you shouldn't force your opinions onto somebody else, and that's into ex- having to do it. And that's exactly what you shared that video of the the gay guy talking yeah, about yeah. that. And uh, what was his messaging? He again? said it was incredible. He was like sick of them representing him, like Corey said. Yeah, and he's like their arguments don't ring true of what I believe in. Yes, um, I don't." I, we shouldn't have to force our belief. Like, that just says that we're insecure in our own selves. Yes. Yeah, so we shouldn't be like, you have to support us. It's like, if you support yourself, mm-hmm. what does it fucking matter? The intrinsic mm. Obviously, if violence stems from that, then it's a different story. But mm. in terms of support, like, you shouldn't have to go, guys, validate me. Yeah. Validate me. Validate my lifestyle. It's, I am who I am. Yeah. I validate myself. Yeah. Full stop. Yeah. And, um, and the it comes from within. Yeah, yeah, and that point uh, that he made uh, about at the end, um, which was the religion. Yeah, no, but being inclusive of all oh, ideas, yeah. and you can't oh. scream inclusivity when you won't demonstrate it yourself. Yes, you can't be diverse if you've oh, yeah. abandoned it. Divert, yeah. yeah, because if you if you're uh, yeah screaming at them to to, to, to f- you have to agree, you have to wear this. Yeah, 
That is the opposite of what you're not you being preach. inclusive of his religious beliefs. Exactly. So yeah, and that was a great that was a great way of wording it. And he, and the, if I had have said that, it would have been met with fucking screaming down. But because he's a gay guy, it was fucking celebrated. Oh, you watch how gay men who say that get treated by yeah, their yeah. own community. And, and you know who's a great example of this? Rudy Lee. Yeah. Yeah. You watch how the establishment gays treat Rudy. They cannot fucking get away from him quick enough. And really? it's because he's not part of that strata of society. Mm. And at the end of the day, for all the talk of, in, of tolerance and inclusivity, if you're from the wrong side of the tracks yeah. and you've got the wrong opinions, you're not part of the fucking club. Yeah, mm. and you're out. Yeah, he's making they, them jokes, was, were. That's fucking great. That yeah. was such a good joke as well. Yeah. Like, when it fucking went viral for a reason. Yeah. Yeah. Like, incredible. And, yeah, we're not allowed to say that. And that's fine. I don't care. Like, but, it, yeah, he, you're right. He's adopting a, a very different ideology. Yeah. It, it, like everything, it will swing back towards the middle eventually. It's got, it has to because okay. it's, it's getting... Well, it's unravelling now and you yeah. can see the ideological schizophrenia of the left playing out in real time because they haven't got a philosophical foundation mm. from which to argue this. Mm -hmm. The entire body of Western philosophy is on the side of our mm. view, right? And mm. we could be wrong, right? But yeah. no one with a different opinion wants to sit down and discuss yeah. it. And the problem is it's not hateful either. Mm. It's not hateful. We're not spewing misogyny, homophobia, any of that shit. You're stating an opinion which you're allowed to have. And it might be right or wrong, mm -hmm. but as long as it's not causing violence or hate, which it's not, you're trying to state facts. Now, some, well, some people would find this dangerous, but we're thinking out loud. Generally, yeah. when we're talking here, yeah. I could I could say something and I'm thinking out loud. Maybe I misword something. Maybe I misrepresent myself. Here's an interesting anecdote you guys would like. So I found myself talking to someone who works in marketing at uh, the Fringe and saying, you know, how the number's going, and I, you know, we're really down. Uh, and they're thinking at the Fringe level that maybe it's because of the LGBT saturation and giving, you know, that crowd the best venues, the best time slots, that people are seeing. And I was just like, like, well, maybe if you make art that's reflective of 5% of the population for yeah. 10 fucking years yeah. and waterboard them with it, they might get sick of it. Yeah. Mm. And also, thought. also, I mean, on the flip side, current rates of inflation and uh, mortgages and stuff going up, there's less expendable money. But yeah. I had that thought the other day. It's like, the fact that we're even talking about it, it's such a small percentage of society. That's fine. Do what, do what the fuck you want. I don't care. Like, why am I even talking about it? It shouldn't even fucking affect me because it's forced in my face. Mm. We, we bring it up, we chat about it. But you're 100% right, Corey, is that it's not representative of 90% or 80% of the population. Having <coughs> diversity is fantastic, but if it's saturated and forced in your face, yeah. and if people don't go want to go watch it, then it's... It speaks for itself. The, the proofs. You know, oh, sorry. Yeah, go. The, sorry, I'm not the proofs in the pudding. The proofs in the, what Corey just said. Then, when there's acts that are getting the best venues at the best time mm -hmm. slots, getting all the awards, yeah. and the act fucking sucks, and everyone says it, and they're not selling tickets. Yeah. If you're not moving tickets and you're at a prime time in a prime venue, fucking quit. Yeah. And you've yeah. got we're on the other side of town. Yeah. And yeah. The thousands of dollars in marketing budgets. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like they don't, don't even mention our shows because yeah. we're running our own thing because we're two white guys. Like yeah. we don't get mentioned yeah. at all, and we're moving tickets. Ever. So they don't give comedy the amount of time. They, they haven't for 10 years. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I want to, like, I was just saying to Mush, like, just as a piss take, do a World Vision ad and go, hi, guys, I'm Daniel. I'm a straight white male comedian and I don't get any coverage because I have my white privilege. Please help me out. I right. can't win an award do it. without being diverse. Let's do it today. Yeah. But Let's do you know film it today. Do you know what's funny? I, uh, yeah, uh, I still want to book the record bite every now and again for big <laughs> shows. <laughs> <laughs> you know what's funny though, Branchy? It's talking about, you know, I'll that's. Do, I'll do it. <laughs> yeah. okay? I'll, I'll do it. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Hi. Yeah. Do you know what's funny is that we are a member of what, 5, 6% of the population who are unvaccinated? Yep. Mm -hmm. You know what we're not doing is going out demanding that we remake society in our own image and mm. put a fucking unvaccinated flag on everything. Mm. Oh, yeah. Yeah, you I mean, should, what we, would the flag be? Just a healthy heart. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what the flag, but you know all this flag <laughs> shit. You know, like why does every group need to have a flag? It's very fucking eighteenth century politics for me. Yeah, you know? flaggets, Flag <laughs> flaggets. <laughs> <laughs> Clip it. <laughs> Woo! He's cancelled from the reggae right now. <laughs> Damn it. They can't. They can't cancel me. <laughs>
Yeah. Oh, classic. Yeah. Fuck. Did you want to finish on the World Economic Forum? Nah. Didn't. Nah. That was All a good. good. That was a nice. That's a fucking close on that. That's mean. a nice That's happy a nice ending. Close. I was going to say, I, would, I really want to read some Fringe React, maybe on a Patreon. Oh, can we please do that for yeah. the Patreon? Well, let's yes. do a quick Patreon. We'll have a quick break. Yeah, we'll okay, cool. Yeah. We'll do a Patreon. Uh, before we wrap it up, I just want to give my any Adelaide listeners a shout out. I'll be in Adelaide next week at Gluttony. Uh, I had to change the name of my show in Adelaide because last year they knocked me back on the show name. What was the show name last year? LGBTQ and on. That's uh, fucking brilliant. Very clever. They, they wouldn't let me have it, uh, and I didn't want to run with which, her. Which morality. part was the part I didn't like? Yeah. Well, <laughs> the fu- the I fusion. think it was the Corey White part. <laughs> 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 but they let me in. If it was um, Corey, uh, <laughs> neutral colour. No. So, yeah, at, at the Gluttony, at, at the Squeaker in Adelaide. So, come along, Sammy. Yeah, tickets are already moving out of there. And last show for the Fringe, Saturday night down in Frio. Beautiful. Um, for me and Cam, uh, we've got 9.30 confessional Friday, Saturday. Finally, everything's... Well, we've been doing all right from day one, but, like, now everything's starting to get towards selling out early in the week. So, I think we've got about... 15, 20 tickets left. Yeah, for both. And come check out Confessional. It's brilliant. And then my show's just going gangbusters. So if you want to come, please come to the Saturday night or Sunday, 133 years single. Um, and Who's Rhyme is finally getting some numbers in as well. And we've mm. got uh, Scrappy MMA. Oh, yeah. Tomorrow night up yep. in uh, Willis in there. Yeah. Going to roast some UFC fighters. Do you, know, yeah. Do you know how I know how much I fucking love my daughter? <laughs> I, yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. Here we go. I, I turned down... On to, with the Reapers to meet Volkanovski last night and Della and and Della and, and um and just hanging and chilling and the whole filming. crew the whole crew to hang good with my men daughter. don't get enough credit for being good fathers, Branchy. <laughs> so oh, I want to shout and you out I'll, there uh, and hopefully we can get you a father of the year oh, nomination. Mate, yeah. really? I'm telling you that is genuinely the, the most I've ever like I've toiled all day going fuck how can I do this like how can I try and get someone to look after my daughter like I would have done it. I'm going to get out me. of <laughs> I'm going to get out of swimming lessons, but I just thought nah, I got to. I had to do that that one. And Couldn't you um, just drop her at swimming lessons, take off, and then Mitch Johnson's <laughs> normally there, so I should have just left you. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, that was yeah, that was um, that FOMO's still there. I would yeah. have loved to have been on that, but I can't wait. I don't know if that's out yet, but I think they released that today. They fully filmed it. So yeah, speaking of Mitch Johnson, uh, Up and Joke Two looks like it's slowly, slowly getting in the works. Yes, pencil April twenty nine in. Um, Buddha called me today and potential new venue might be at the new varsity. Apparently, it can hold 600 in Inaloo, which is fucking ideal. Oh, that's great. Yeah, because fuck the theatres. They're thieves. Yeah, and they lock yeah, you yeah. in with their ticketing yeah. system. So, the only one we were really considering was, was Gage, Asta. And Gage Roads. Um, and Gaster, but, yeah, yeah. yeah. But for a theatre, because they literally take, I think, $7 a ticket or something. I, no. I can't remember what it was, and then that was it. Fucking I, parasites. I like Astor. The lady and the man that run that yeah. are quite like. Well, they make their money off nice. alcohol sales, so yeah. they just want you to pump people in, and they'll take a, I think, a cut of your. I think it was like a seven hundred dollar fee or something. Yeah, to cover it. But yeah, I, th- I have a feeling they're with Ticket Tech as well, though. Yeah, but yeah. yeah. Either way, but yeah. they don't take the money as well. Like they don't fucking charge you all this extra. S- and do we discuss? Well, we might as well just say we're looking at a restructure of Patreon. But if you are top level, you'll be getting some. Uh, with Up and Joke Tour, you're either going to get extremely cheap tickets or free ones. Um, mm. It's got to suss it all out with the details. But mm. everyone else, there's bonus Patreon pods. Um, yeah. There'll be one with Corey White to discuss Fringe Reacts. Yeah, we'll do that. And then I'll also do um, the one we did on Sunday or Saturday. Yep. Um, I'll, release that. I'll probably release that tomorrow. Yeah, well. cool. So. so there's a conspiracy theory one coming on. Yeah, that's fun. With a lad over with from Andy uh, Roach. Liverpool. Yeah. Mm. Sick. Cool. All right, let's get hard. I mean, you've done that two, weeks. <laughs> two weeks in a row. You've done that. <laughs>